Oh, you know what I forgot? I forgot to grab some music. I always forget that. That's always the last thing I uh, I always remember. That. That's always the last Oh, thing and I, I forgot I, uh, to mute the show. That's real good when the host himself forgets to mute the show. So, hello. I do it every day. Yeah, yeah. I know. Hello, everybody out there in viewer land. Uh, Lucidius Rage here with All the Rage Live. This week we are interviewing none other than uh, Higgy Sigs Jen, we call her. Uh, she is a host on uh, Our Gang. Uh, she is also the business owner of Higgy Sigs. Uh, Robert, thank you very much, sir, for a great show as always. I appreciate you uh, always bringing me a warm audience that uh, that's always ready and excited for a show. So thank you. Great show as always. What was that, Jen? Nothing. <laughs> Tonight we have uh, the Hobbit on with us. We've got my wife, the Crafty Buckeye, and we've got, of course, the uh, the center of the attention tonight, uh, Jen. Oh, I need to change. You need to change that coupon code. It's actually Rage One Five. Oh, okay. Um, let me change that. So tonight, uh, that what she was just talking about was a coupon code that she made for us. Uh, Rage15. And that is Rage15 is going to get you 15% off at HiggySigs.com. Okay, that's super cool. Hey, get over here. Uh, m my wife, uh, incidentally, Jen, is vaping your juice right now. Uh, oh, really? Which flavor do you have? Hi, dog. Um, it's the it's the um, Pacific Coast. Yes, salad. thank you. I couldn't think of it. <laughs> yeah, there were a couple great. that I was going to grab, and then that was the one that looked good. Oh, that was my favorite. Yeah, yeah, I like. I think. Um, you know, when I when I first started vaping, I was I thought that I would really really like um, like fruity vapes, but I didn't, and it's not that many that I do like. I usually go for like a bakery vape. So, um, but I always want to try fruity ones, and I usually don't like them. But this one's really good, so I was I was really happy with this because like I love like fruit flavoring anything. But whenever I got the fruity vapes, I'm like, oh, this is just okay, and I was really disappointed. But this one, I'm like, yay, I really like it. So this is good. I think the fruity vapes. I think the fruity vapes tend to be real hit and miss. Um, they either all taste exactly the same. Or you, you rarely find that fruity vape that really has that unique, uh, clean taste. That's one of the things I like about your juice, uh, Jen. Uh, the, uh, the Pacific Coast I really enjoy. And the other one I've been enjoying is the, um, the Pegasus Tears. This one here. That Our one most I'm... popular flavor. Pardon me? Our most popular flavor. Is, it, is the Pegasus down. Tears? Yes. Is it really? I'm going to turn you up yes. just a little bit. I think I've got you a little bit quiet here. Let me turn you up a little. Uh, out there in the audience, first of all, can you hear everything? Everybody okay? And I know that I've talked. I know that the Crafty Buckeye has talked. Of course, Higgy, uh, Higgy uh, Six Jen has talked. The Hobbit doesn't know how to talk yet. So how about how do the three of us say? <laughs> What's going on, everybody? <laughs> Music okay? I... Volumes okay? All that kind of good stuff? Don't. I think it's really funny because... Please, you're not quiet. Like, you're not a quiet person. I didn't think. Like, <laughs> well, damn. <laughs> I mean, like, I didn't, you know, like, like when we, you know, we met, I didn't think, oh, he's just so quiet and shy. No, I didn't think that. I would, that was not really kind of what came across. The <laughs> Melon wants you to take your hat off. <laughs> to, to answer that uh, question. Apparently not. Yeah, to answer that question, not. no hobbits do not have hair. Do not have hair. <laughs> nope. Not at all. So, uh, how many have, how many out there in the audience have heard of Higgy Sigs or heard uh, or seen one of uh, Jen's show? Jen runs a show, by the way, uh, every Friday. Uh, I'm sorry, is it Friday? No. Yes, right? Friday. Well, of course, it would yeah, have to be Friday. Friday, otherwise it wouldn't be TGIJ. That makes the perfect sense. Um, yeah, I know. Yeah, it's funny, too, because when you actually say the acronym out loud, it kind of sounds really conceited. You know, thank God it's Jen. Really? No, no, it's not fine. But, but the whole, it was Friday, so it was like TGIF. Okay, TGI Jen. That's kind of how that happened. Hey, listen, I'm married to a Jen. Believe me, I'm all familiar with the uh, the world revolving <laughs> around uh, Jen. So. <laughs> I'm married to a redhead, though. <laughs> oh, wow. 
That's gonna be that's gonna be a combination, a ginger and a gin in the same house. Holy cow. Yes, a ginger <laughs> and a redhead in the same house. Or a ginger and a gin, yes. So, uh, yes, Jen- yes. Scuba <laughs> saying we come rescue you when you need it. Yes. Scuba <laughs> <laughs> actually lives very close by. He only lives about ten miles away. Scuba is uh, Scuba's awesome. Scuba's one of my favorite people. I've had a lot of good conversations with him. He's, uh, I'm, I'm, of course, you know, he's a host here on VE Live, and uh, boy, were we happy to, happy to have him, of course. Um, speaking of hosting, though, you host on Fridays, like I was saying, from 11 a.m. till 2. <clears throat> and I've got to tell you from uh, just my own personal uh, perspective, I am damn glad you host uh, in that time slot because... Oh. You know, the, the one thing that the daytime schedule, I think, kind of tends to lack a, a little bit of is, is great shows. Uh, and you happen to have a great show, uh, you know, on, on the Fridays, uh, you know, from 11 to 2. It's, for those of you who haven't seen it or don't know what it is, uh, Jen does a DIY show, um, talks to her audience, interacts with everybody, brings you into her lab, which, by the way, she has a beautiful lab. Um, cool. and, and it's, it's cool. It's, it's nice to interact that way. So, so what, what got you interested, Jen, in hosting? What, what made you, uh, what gave you that bug? Actually, I, I kind of resisted it for a while. I, uh, I met, um, we found Vapor TV and, and I met, uh, Joey, who is the owner at our game channel. And, um, and he was trying to get me, he was trying to get both me and my husband into casting and, and I was shying away from it because honestly I I hated I, I always hated the way I looked on webcam so I, I would I would completely avoid ever getting a webcam until I really discovered that it's all about angles okay because see I have my my laptop kind of elevated here so you're kind of looking at me from a certain angle and you find that perfect angle that you look good at and you you know this is what you got right now that's what you're seeing <laughs> it's the right for, angle for those in the audience I'm still looking for that perfect angle for me every way I put it I look ugly I don't I don't know where to fix that no, I totally but, know what she means I'm like pillows and popped up exactly and... <laughs> because every time I'd ever turned on my webcam I had literally had my laptop in well my lap right and they face it okay I don't care who you are this angle is not attractive to anybody no. okay <laughs> right. this angle does not work on anybody <laughs> so I, I was like you know I hated it and so I but I started playing around with this and uh, and what happened was is um we uh I was playing around with exploit and uh, you know Joey was sending me some files one night and, and he said, well, the channel's open right now. Why don't you go ahead and just log on and see how it looks? Because I had set up sort of this, like, in the club scene, you know, like this with a disco ball and stuff like that. And I went ahead and I logged on. And in, like, 10 minutes, like, 30 people were in the room. And I'm like, what is going on? I'm so popular. <laughs> I know. Like, out of the blue, like, I just logged on to test it. And, like, within 10, 15 minutes, there was, like, 30 people in the room. And I'm going, well, Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Where did all you people come from, and what are you doing? I know. Here? <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, and so I'm like, okay, this is easy. <laughs> I can do this, and um, yeah. So, and it, it took a couple months, so a couple months of just doing that um, before. Um, actually, it was um, I think it was Oki Music Girl. Um, I don't know if she's in the room or not, but she's a viewer here at, at Vapor TV who. Uh, loves uh or who who watched me a lot and she said i think you should do a diy show of course i made no secret of the fact i was a cheese maker and um so uh i passed the idea by you know by the r gaming channel and they said yeah that that sounds like a good idea why don't you make some juice and then give it away and i was like okay <laughs> so that's kind of how that happened I'm trying to set your chroma key just right, and, and I'm having a, a little bit of uh, difficulty, so I apologize for the uh, colors dancing around, Jen, for, <laughs> for no, the it's, time it's being. No, it's not it. I used to have better lighting here, but I moved it to, uh, I moved it to, to my new office. So. Nice. Um, so, you, yeah. you, you talked about appearance, and, and there's something that I want to spend some time talking about because it's, a, it's something that's very near and dear to my heart. Um, you know, and I know uh, from from listening to you that it's it's near and dear to yours. I'm just going to turn the chroma key off and keep the green, if that's okay. Um, sure. Probably would be easier. <laughs> Otherwise, it's going to it's going to keep cutting your your skin color out. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, 
uh, but anyway, so uh, we were talking about appearances, and you were you, know, you were talking about camera angles and, and whatnot. Um, you obviously have short hair, and what I love about your short hair is that it's it's for uh, such a good reason. Uh, and, and I just wanted to know if you wanted to you know to talk about that a little bit because I know that it was a big change actually, for you. I want to see this actually, David. Are you still down here, David? I think you still down here. I just heard the toilet floor. <laughs> <laughs> David, help! They're talking about my hair. <laughs> I know, right? No, I, I because here is the thing. I, I, I shaved it off for the St. Baldrick um, shave off uh, event. I had David. Did you grab my ponytail on the table there? <laughs> you kept it. I no. Well, I'm no, going no, to donate the, it. Yeah, she's got. She's she kept it to donate, to donate it to it. some kind of program. Here's oh, okay. the thing. I am having I'm having a little trouble finding the right program to donate it to. Um, not to toot my own horn, but I have I had very long, very healthy, very thick, beautiful hair. Oh this wow! Is my ponytail? It's a lot of hair. Um, that I have that I need to donate. It's very very thick. You can see it here. It's that thick. Um, it's, it's very long, um, here is the problem, my dog is trying to, my dog is trying to, uh, to look at it now, um, <laughs> and she was just climbing up on it, anyway, uh, I wanted to donate it to, uh, Wigs for Kids, um, and, cause it was sort of tied into the whole, you know, cancer research for children's cancer thing, turns out Wigs for Kids will not accept, uh, gray hair, and that's a bit of a problem. <laughs> <laughs> um, Either I that or it's going to take you a lot of hours taking all those little, you know, pieces out. Yeah, right? and then there wouldn't be a whole lot of an issue. Lot. So, um, I did not want to do lots of love because I had read that they charge, um, um, that they charge, um, excuse me one second. Good night, honey. He's going to bed. Um, anyway, night, I, did not want to do, <laughs> I did not want to do locks of love because I've heard that they charge a lot of money for their wigs. And mm -hmm. while I accept, I understand and accept the fact that it does take a lot of time and skill to make a wig, um, I know that I can purchase a synthetic wig for about 50 bucks. And if I can do that with synthetic, synthetic hair, they should be able to do that with human hair. Um, I would think it would be more difficult to make, and, and I know I know very little. Um, I, my sister, uh, who is no longer with us, uh, you know, she would uh, before she'd go into her, she had cancer uh, that she fought three times, and each time she had grown her hair, you know, out to a long length, and then before she would go into treatment, she would, you know, do what you did. She would cut her hair off to to donate it. Um, mm -hmm. But to be honest with you, I don't I don't know anything about the process other than uh, that from what I understand, it, it's a fairly difficult process um, to to make you know a wig out of human hair versus like synthetic hair. I don't know why, um, but I know that they were quite expensive because when the first two times that she came out of chemo, uh, like you said, uh, when she went to go buy a uh, you know, um, I, I, are they called wigs? I guess. Uh, yeah. You know, they were extremely expensive uh, for you know real, uh, you know real hair wigs, and and it almost seemed. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, it was a bummer, you know, to know that she had donated like, twice, yeah. you know, and and it was so expensive to get one back. And, and, and that's the thing too, is, I mean, I feel like if I'm going to do this, um, you know, I definitely want to donate it. And, and I mean, if these people already have cancer, they're already going through enough. Right. You know, don't make them spend three, four, five hundred dollars on a wig. And so I'm, I'm looking for, I've heard, I've heard a couple of uh, Pantene is one. I, I just, I want to do some more research and I want to make sure I donate it to the right organization. Well, isn't lots of love, don't they, aren't they um, alopecia instead of cancer? For kids, is, is that um, the one? I don't, I don't know. I just, I remember reading some stuff about lots of love, and I thought, well, that's crappy. <laughs> yeah. I, think, I think there's one that is that pretty much does like kids and like alopecia, like kids, not not cancer. So right. I don't know which one that is, but 
Well, I think the point though is is that they're they're taking something that is donated and, and turning around and making you know spending making quite a profit off of it. Um, but at the same time, you know, I'll tell you this, uh, you know, my sister, um, thank, you know, thank goodness that those were available, uh, regardless of where she got them or how much she had to pay for them because they were, you know, they brought, they gave her some self-confidence back. And, you know, the first time, especially when she had lost everything, my, my sister had beautiful, long, you know, like, you know, Julia Roberts kind of hair, um, and it was devastating, you know, for her to not have that. Um, so in her case, you know, thank goodness there was somebody like you, uh, you know, and like herself, uh, you know, that was willing to, to do that. Now, you did it for a cause, and I think your husband also cut his hair, right? I shaved him bald. I scalped him. <laughs> yeah. I took him down to the scalp. Yeah. And he has our, it's amazing, actually, how much both of our hairs, both of our heads have grown back. I measured mine. Well, it, actually, this was almost over, almost two weeks ago. I measured it, um, and it because uh, he he used the number eight guard on me, so I took it down to one inch, and um, it's already grown out an inch and a half, and that was over a week ago. So it could be well close to two inches by now. Um, fast. So, yeah, and David actually looks like he shaved with a two or three guard. Actually, his head he's pretty he's pretty filled in already. And this happened one month ago, actually, uh, one month ago on the second. So, um, yeah, this is. I, I did the spiked up thing for a couple weeks, and now I'm trying to. I'm doing the flat thing. I think it's a little classier. Uh, so, <laughs> thank you, Oh the Babe. I, I so, met. Yeah, I now now okay. Here's the question: What's easier, the short hair or the long hair? Oh my God, girls. Girls, 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 seriously, every single girl in the room, you do not know what these guys are hiding from us, okay? <laughs> you do not understand how easy they have it, okay? I'm telling you, I use like a drop of shampoo, okay? I use, I, I don't even need to use conditioner, but I do, just, just to try to keep it soft, okay? You guys do not know what these, you, you girls don't know what you, these guys are hiding from us. I'm serious, I, 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 I don't even need to use a brush. Okay. <laughs> the biggest problem I have is that I have discovered I have a giant cowlick right here that I didn't know I had, mm -hmm. and and so I'm having to like tame that thing down, and it's like right back here. Um, but that is like the only problem I've had so far, and like a little bit of water and hairspray just knocks that right out. Seriously, you, you I, guys uh, have been hiding this from us. I tried to grow my hair out one time. First of all, I looked horrible. <laughs> but but second of all, you know, you go through that stage between short and and long. It's just totally awkward, and you can't do anything with it. And you're gonna you're gonna find that stage. And it's gonna drive you absolutely crazy. Well, yours is long but, now, and it's yeah. Yeah, mine is. I I, I mine's pretty pretty yeah. shaggy right now. Yeah. Okay. Well, okay, see, I okay. actually had a, a short, <laughs> shaggy haircut when I when I first met my hu my husband. Uh -huh. um, we were skating. I had kind of that kind of Meg Ryan shaggy kind of cut. So um, it was. Um, I I'm kind of looking forward to that because that was fun. Uh, and I started letting it grow out because he liked it long. We were getting married, and I figured it would look better with a wedding dress, have long hair. And I just kept letting it go. <laughs> I yell at my wife, and, and I shouldn't even admit this out loud, but I but I will. I yell at my wife every time she comes home from the haircut place, and ha and like she hadn't done it lately, but she comes home. Place. Yeah, the haircut place, you know. <laughs> sure, <laughs> the haircut place. Is that like going to buy like food at like that food store? Right, exactly. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. Um, and, and she would come back with with you know with with shorter hair. And, and I remember this one time, and, and looking back at it, I felt, I, I feel horrible now for what I said, I don't know, seven or eight years ago. And it wasn't she, that long ago. Wasn't it? No. Okay, well, whenever it was. <laughs> she came in, had her hair cut short, and I looked at her, and she says, well, what do you think? And I said... How long will it grow back? Or how long will it take to grow it back? <laughs> now, <laughs> or something like that. What did I say? It was pretty much that. Now, let me tell you, 
when I went to go get it done, I was not a happy camper because it looked nothing like how I, I went to a brand new hairdresser and I took this picture and I'm like, this is what I want my hair to look like. And I showed her the picture and I should have realized where I was going because it was one of our old neighbors who no longer is there anymore who said to go to her hairdresser and I should have realized where I was going it was not going to be a place that would have done this correctly. So. I mean, I pretty much left the place crying because of oh. what my hair looked like. It was, I mean, it was so awful. And then... Wait, would that be I, the stripper neighbor that always wanted to get strange from the neighborhood? No, that was the one that lived two doors down. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> We've had some real colorful neighbors. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> the married one. She's like, I'm going to get me some strange. And I'd be yeah. like, wow. <laughs> Nice. So yeah, so I like I left the place crying, and I come home, and he says that, and it's like I just wanted to put a bag over my head. It was so awful. Oh. I, I'm not always known, Jen. Well, I, I'm speaking to the left, Jen. Now, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to like I'm gonna call I'm gonna call you wife for the rest of the night, honey. That's fine. <clears throat> So, honey, just try honey. Oh no, she likes <laughs> wife. See, some people think wife is like derogatory. <clears throat> my wife likes that term. I don't know. <clears throat> but anyway, um, I've totally forgot what I was going to say. Now. Oh, yeah, I know what I was going to say. Uh, I, I'm not always um, the most, uh, gosh, what do I say? I'm pretty direct. Tactful? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm not always the most tactful. The good thing is, though, with me is that when I say something, you know it is exactly what it is. Because there's just no wishy-washy with me. Um, usually that's a good thing. Sometimes that makes me an asshole. But hey. <laughs> well, I try not to hurt people's feelings, but I'm pretty direct. But I try not to be hurtful. Well, true. True. Yeah. Like, I'm the kind of person, like, if I go over to some place to someone's house for dinner and they make something that's, like, really shitty, I would I would be the one be like, oh, my God, I really want the recipe. Even though, like, when I get home, I'm going to throw it away. You know? But that, I mean, you know, where he would be like, yeah, this sucks. I'm not eating anymore. I'm going to go home and eat. And I'd be like, it's not. That's what I'm to say. I mean, I wouldn't be that direct. I might say, no. you know, I'm full. Well, but I thought you haven't eaten all day. Yeah, but, you know. Um, I don't I don't eat. <laughs> I don't eat. <laughs> yeah. I'm anti-food. Um, you, though, Jen, it sounds like I've got a much more supporting husband. Actually, I'm just kidding. I really am a supporting husband, but your oh, husband... Oh, I don't cut my hair. I don't. <laughs> huh? I, I don't want to say I don't, don't, but I mean, I, I kind of don't. Um, no, he actually uh, fought me on this, because I, I had wanted to get in on the St. Balzer shave for uh, a couple weeks. Um, I get miserable in the summertime. I live in Atlanta, and uh -huh. people will tell you that it just gets swelteringly hot here. And I was just, get, I was miserable last summer, and I constantly would say to him, don't be surprised if I, you come home one day and I shaved my head, because uh, I was so, so ridiculously hot. And I had wanted to get in on this for several weeks, and when I found out there were two other women that were doing it, <laughs> I was like, hey, not cool, I want to do this too. And he was like, you know, your hair is so beautiful, and it's so long, and it's so pretty, and I'm like... Come on! And so, about like 30 minutes before the cast was over, he, I, I had kind of like I was stomping my foot and you know, with my hands on my hips, and I had just left the room and I was sitting downstairs. And he came downstairs and he said, "All right, you want to do this?" And I'm like, "Really?" And he was like, "Come on, let's do it now!" And I was like, "Okay." <laughs> so I went up and did it. It was like a last minute thing. Wow. <laughs> yeah, no, no, he he fought me on it, tooth and toenail, right up until the last minute. Yeah, <laughs> he's a pretty reasonable guy, though. He's now now your husband is uh, he's in the business with you, right? With Higgy yeah. Six. Yeah. I did not get a chance, uh, Jen, and I apologize. I didn't get a chance to download some of the pictures of your lab. I'll, I should go do that. Uh, or actually, more specifically, you actually, didn't send me pictures of I the lab. I didn't send them. I didn't. <laughs> um, I can, I can get them to them Jen's husband, and I apologize, I don't know his name. Um, David. David. Uh, David. Either his name is David, or there's someone there else that's living in her house that she was referring to as David. Oh well, there you go. Maybe, you know, it could have been it could have been a son or a neighbor, or it could have been her dog. Maybe her dog grabbed it for her. 
no, it was just David. It's just me and David. It's my dog. Um, well, my dogs are little bitty dogs. I don't even see that. They're usually here with me, but um, they're little bitty dogs. So they put me. <laughs> what kind of dogs do you have? I have two Shih Tzus and a Chihuahua. Oh, nice. We have uh, we have a Irish Wolfhound, two Chinese Cresteds, and a miniature Poodle. I just saw one of the Chinese Cresteds. He was so cute. I was Pogo. Yeah, he he's Pogo is a camera whore. <laughs> yeah, like when I when I get up, he'll come sit in my spot and sniff the camera. It's yeah. really kind of cute. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, she's gonna come. Here we go. Here we go. We got one right there. Here's one of them. Oh, it's the baby. Aww. Oh, it's the baby. Look at the baby. Well, one of the purposes of this, of, of what the All the Rage Live show is now, is, you know, I, I specifically am doing this series so that people have an opportunity to get to know this kind of stuff. Because this is the stuff that we don't get to talk about as hosts during our show. You know, the, a lot of the stuff comes up here and there. Um, but, you know, I, I wanted to give people an opportunity to get to know sort of the more in depth. Uh, person in the host, uh, you know, so they can relate to you, uh, you know, more and, and see what's out there. Um, and then a lot of the people that are here watching tonight, you know, unfortunately work during the day, so they probably can't catch your show during the day. Um, but there are a lot that can. And, uh, you know, like I said, when we're, when we're doing our own show, we can't so much. I mean, we can talk about ourselves to some degree, but it, we, we really can't say too much about ourselves. Otherwise, it starts sounding like, um, I don't know. A little bit. Yeah, a little, <laughs> yeah. bit. A little bit. So, so with I mean, that like, people... all the time. <laughs> oh, D. Millen found it. Oh, yeah, he found the Breaking Bad picture. Oh, no, it, uh, it didn't work. The time you were all didn't work. It didn't work. Um, let's see. Where did he put that picture? It was on what? Oh, he says check mailbox. So I had you have pictures here. There. Love it. <laughs> oh, there we go. Walter White. Love. All right, tell you what, we'll uh, yeah. we'll pull up uh, Jen's husband. Oops, this is I... this is a picture of David in 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 his full lab gear. Um, uh, we were getting prepared to handle uh, the pure you know free base mix. The 1,000 milligram stuff, um, and uh, so we're gonna handle plutonium. Breaking Bad here. Well, it, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. It is not an official clean room, Nate. I will admit that. I don't want to portray anything that we are not. We do plan on this making it a clean room eventually, but it is currently. Um, it, it does not, we haven't installed the HEPA filters and all that stuff yet, but it is definitely clean. Well, <laughs> yes, it is right. definitely clean. And and here's the thing, and I, I have to, um, you know, I have to give you credit for this. Uh, while it's not a, um, um, what's the word I'm looking for, a sterile room, a sterile clean room, uh, you are making That's clear right. efforts to do the right thing. You know, your lab is clean, it's organized, you don't have animals running in and out of the room. You know, you, you uh, from what I remember, you were setting up some filters. Um, you know, you, you practice all the right procedures. I've watched you make juice before. Uh, you know, I, I, I like that you, uh, when you're doing the show, uh, you know, that you talk about safety, that you're not just, you're not just doing things uh, and mixing juice without talking about what it is that you're doing. You show people why you're putting on gloves. You show people, you know, why you are not reusing, uh, you know, a syringe from one bottle to the next. Uh, in fact, in your clean room, uh, all of your bottles have their own syringes built in, or not built in, but their own uh, uh, syringes assigned to each bottle. And and you know, those are steps. Those are steps. Quite honestly, that. Uh, you know, I think are admirable, uh, especially compared to a lot of the other, you know, juice that's out there being made in somebody's living room and being sold, you on know, a tray table. Yeah, on a tray <laughs> table and, and, and being sold, um, you know, as premium juice. Uh, uh, you know, I, I like that you're making that effort. Uh, and it's got to feel good to be in your own in your own office, in your own lab. I know that we've talked a little bit about this. 
uh, you you recently the, you know this the office and the lab and all this stuff is fairly recent, right? Yes. Um, I mean, I did have a a mixing station at the house, uh, you know, but it, it was at the house, and, uh, and it was due to all of you wonderful people, all of you viewers. I have to say, I mean, we could not have done it without Vapor TV. Um, that that you know, we were able to build it up enough so that we could afford to uh, lease the space and actually move it out of the house and into a lab, and we are excited to share that with you. And that's not, you know, a lot of people. Um, when they think of prices in juice, you know, first of all, your juice, your guys's juice is very reasonably priced. Um, but a lot of times, when people think about prices in juice uh, or in liquid, I should say, I don't, I don't really like calling it juice to be honest with you. I prefer to call it liquid. Um, okay. But, but uh, you know, when people look at the price of of liquid, um, you know, a lot of people will gawk at it being too much or too expensive or whatever, even when it's, you know, 10 or $15 for a 30 mil, which quite frankly is a, is a good price for, for, you know, 30 mils, 10 to 15 bucks. I think, so. uh, I think it's a great price. But what they don't think about, you know, it's not just the cost of PG and VG and Nick and flavoring. Uh, it's the cost of <laughs> the, the leasing the office, the leasing the lab, the paying the electricity. The I mean, it's not cheap. No, it's, I mean, you know, and there's business licenses and there's, uh, you know, occupational certificates and there's, a, you know, there's, uh, uh, <laughs> um, you know, insurance and there's internet connection and there's security, you know, you have to monitor security system and, uh, you know, there's all that stuff that, you know, comes into play and, and, you know, now we have, I mean, at the moment, I only have the one personal laptop. I mean, I definitely can see in the future needing more than one computer. You know, right now I have to bring my laptop home or take it to work, and it's the only thing that has all my information on it. So, I did just send you a picture on Skype, um, uh, Lucidius. Yep. Uh, it's a picture of the lab. So. Let me, let me pull that up here. Uh, screen capture. Does your X split when you go to capture a screen? Does it like tend to kind of freeze on you? Actually, yes. It it, it actually sometimes drops the broadcast. Oh, it drives me crazy. X split altogether when I do screen capture. So, so this is an actual picture of the lab. Um, you see on the floor there we have our five gallon buckets of PG and VG with um, pump handles to pump the. Oh, out. nice. Yeah. Um, and then we have all the flavors of, um, on the, the shelf across the top and the three racks in the wall there. And uh, so yeah, cool. that, that is the lab. That's very cool. We uh, just had that countertop installed. That was that was not there originally. Um, the countertop was just installed a couple weeks ago. I was going to um, say, and this is a fairly recent picture too. I noticed the, the sinks are in now, which is awesome. Yeah. Uh, cool. The sink is there and uh, we're... The wooden supports where the contractor is coming back and he's going to paint those black so that they don't look like, you know, bare wood. Um, <laughs> he just seemed to, he hasn't been able to come back mm -hmm. that yet, so. Um, but, yeah. I mean, I'm looking at this lab and I, I like the way, you know, I like the way that it's set up. You've got tile floors, you've got, um, I assume, the, it, what kind of, what surface is the counter? It is a non-porous laminate. Perfect. Um, it is. Uh, I chose it because it looks good for the floors, and it's pretty. It's kind of granity looking, but it has uh, rounded, rounded uh, edges. Edges. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so there's no seams involved. Even the backsplash is actually all part of it. So it's, it's there's no seam there. There's nowhere for anything to seep down in nice. there and get caught. Um, there is a, a, a seam where the join is, but it, it's very well sealed. Becca is saying that she sees one problem with the room. What is that, Becca? I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that she's not in it right now. <laughs> <laughs> one paper towel. Yes, there is only no. one paper towel. <laughs> 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 I don't go through them quite quickly. <laughs> yeah, I imagine. <laughs> so, yeah, that's uh, isn't it? yeah, and I perfect, and I had the countertop built at a very high level so I could sit or stand at it. Uh, yeah. I usually stand at it sometimes. I, I, I sit in that chair that you see there, but I'm usually standing. Um, so it's, it's a nice 42-inch high counter. Yeah, and I got to design that because I had to put it, so that was fun. <laughs> so was this something that when you started uh, mixing juice for people, uh, was the end goal 
from the very beginning to get yourself into a situation where you would have, uh, you know, be in a lab like this, uh, or, or oops, uh, or was the the end goal just not really in a vision? Was it more or less you just kind of started mixing juice and one thing led to another, and before you knew it, you were here in a you know a lab a year later. What was the well, what was the driving before force? You knew it. It wasn't a before you knew it kind of thing. It mm-hmm. was um, first of all, we've been vaping a while. We we we're we're not necessarily old old school, but kind of old school. Um, I have been vaping over three years. Um, David's been vaping almost four. Uh, he was vaping when I met him, and uh, he got me vaping. And um, back then, you really couldn't. Um, there were no vape shops. Uh, there were no vape shops. And there was even a limited amount online, really. And uh, so when you would go to these online stores, you were kind of limited to what they offered. You know, you had, uh, you know, usually three or four different NIC levels. Uh, generally, you couldn't even choose the PGVG level, or if you could, there was only like two or three options. And then, you know, a list of flavors. Uh, it wasn't, uh, you know, and you were pigeonholed into what they offered. So, uh, when I started, you know, we were buying juice online, and I, I almost, it was almost an immediate thing, really. I mean, within a month, I was probably buying more than one flavor and mixing them together. And they, you know, I was, I remember my first uh, mixing was buying cherry and black cherry and vanilla and mixing the two together and vaping that. Uh, yeah, that sounds good. It was, <laughs> and um, and not regular cherry because it's cherry gets medicine-y, but black cherry is not so bad. And, yeah, cherry is uh, one of those ones that's tough to get right. Right. So, uh, and then and they would send us some samples of different flavors, you know, so we tried some different flavors as well. Um, less than, I mean, really, less than a, a year into vaping that we started reading, like, forms and stuff, people would DIY their juice. You're like, huh, well, we're always having trouble finding the right flavor. Maybe we should think about DIY. We bought, oh, you'd, you'd laugh. Actually, yeah, I might have, you have it available to Oh, I do. Here we go. We bought a little pack of these Loran one dram bottles of flavoring. Look how tiny that is. Mm-hmm. These are the itty bitty bottles okay, mm-hmm. of flavoring. I bought like a 24 pack, you know, probably just one. And what play? oh, Selfie Just is what flavors most popular. That would be hands down Pegasus Cares, absolutely. It's a strawberry, cupcakey, custardy, yummy pile of So, <laughs> um, I bought like, tw- I bought a little pack for like 20 or 30 bucks. I bought a pack of 24 of these, and I started playing with it and mixing juices. And um, I'm like, oh, this is good. You know, and then I let David try it. Oh, this is good. Then we let some friends of ours that we've got into vaping try it. And they're like, oh my gosh, this is like better than what I buy online or what I buy in the store. And I'm like, wow, I have an accident. Who knew? <laughs> <You know? laughs> so we started selling it to our friends, right? And then after about six months of that, um, we're like, you think we should like make this a business. And so we invested in some inventory and we got in some starter kits and stuff. And we had, it was really kind of pitiful. We had an online form. Uh, that you went to and you like selected it was like a survey form that you could just select what you wanted and then we'd figure out payment later kind of thing. Um, and after about a year of doing that, it got big enough that we're like, we need to make this legit. <laughs> so um, that's what we did last April. We got our LLC, got our business license, and here we are. Wow. That's pretty exciting. Was it? Was it? Um, what did you do? If you don't mind my asking, I'm assuming that right now you do uh, your 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 store, your business is your full your. I hate I hate this term, but your full time job, right? Yes, um, it has wh- been for uh, over a year. What kind of career, if you don't mind my asking, were you in prior to this? I was a graphic artist. Um, uh, I have a BFA in computer graphics. Uh, mm-hmm. David is an IT guy. He actually does still work full time uh, somewhere else. Um, he's itching to quit, though. He's itching to make KB6 his full time job, um, and uh, and we're getting there. We're, we're very close, but not, we're not quite there. But we're getting there. Uh, he's an IT guy, and he's like IT super IT geek man. That's what I call him, super IT geek man. <laughs> and um, he's been doing. I mean, he started programming when he was like eight. So uh, he's yeah and. And he always said, he goes, if I ever team up with a graphic designer, we could be dangerous. 
Yeah. So, uh, today, you are, just not in like the right way. He thought, that, <laughs> like, take over <laughs> well, the world he, computer. No, Jesus. Well, <laughs> that's just it, though. He, you know, because he knew that we'd be able to develop like a really cool website and, you know, that we'd be able to do like really cool things like on the internet and on the computer together, me being the designer and him being the IT guy. So, mm -hmm. uh, it's, uh, and, and we did. I always tell people, I said, if you like the way our site looks, that's me. <laughs> like the way it functions, that's him. That's him. <laughs> so. Well, I need to make best friends with you then, Jen, because my site looks horrible. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and it is definitely because I am not a graphic designer by any stretch of the imagination. In fact, my background is your husband's. I, I was in IT for years and years and years and years and years. And, uh, oh, so. yeah. You know what he told me? He said, because yeah. I was like, well, you have to help me decide how we're going to have our website look. So I wanted to pick a theme, you know. And he was like, I like Drudge Report. No, 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 no. Can't have Drudge Report. All right. If any of you have ever been to Drudge Report, it's very cut and dry. Mm -hmm. It's very just columns and just information. You know? Right. It's, it's, it's not pretty. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's uh, the IT people. IT guys don't typically make things pretty. I have a, I have a very difficult time uh, making things pretty, and, and on top of that, I'm kind of colorblind, so it's even worse. That's so, the problem. So yeah, it's like uh, things that I think look fantastic. I showed my wife, and she like cringes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was like yeah, when painting the house with him was a disaster. Oh, just, okay. We, you know, I wanted blue. Well, you said the wall behind me is kind of like like a dark, you know, pewtery kind of blue. Mm -hmm. So this is an accent wall, and the other two walls are like a lighter blue. So okay. he goes to the store, and he comes back, and he's like, "Oh, I found this other color. You know, I think I think it's you know I think you'd like it better. It's like more like a gray blue." And I'm like, "Baby, that's purple." <laughs> no, 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 no. It's like a gray blue, and I'm like. No, it's not. It's purple. It's like, no, no, look look at it. I go, the name is Lavender Dream. What the fuck do you think it is? <laughs> I mean, seriously. <laughs> well, you know, right? look, it's... No, not Lavender. Hey, it's it's all about knowing our limitations, right? <laughs> you don't know the limitations, though. No. Well, you keep trying. That's true. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Well, here you go. Here, this will, Jen, this will give you, uh, uh, you know, here, my, what my husband, because once we got into this casting thing, he got all into this dream screen thing. He was all about it, right? Um, and we, this was, this used to be what he had in his, in his room, his, the room that, you know, he built in his studio. But he has since convinced me to let him paint the wall from the green. Yeah. So he has an entire wall, an 8 foot by 12 foot wall. Of that room is painted chroma green. See, so when he casts, <laughs> oh my! <clears throat> See, I think that would be awesome. Like I hear that, I'm like, yeah, I'm all about that. If I didn't have. Uh, of course, you can't see them now because my green screen's up over top of them. But if I didn't have that green screen up, and I didn't have the cabinets there, I totally would have done that wall in chroma green. Absolutely. I totally would have killed you. You, you would have, but <laughs> <laughs> you would have. But it's okay. I mean, look, I totally listen. would have been looking for another husband. <laughs> <laughs> he did run it by me, and it's in a bedroom that you know that he was setting his office up in, and and like the, you know this. We ended up converting my dining room, which is really empty right now. I mean, because it used to be full of all hickey stick stuff. It was like my dining room is became my office. You know, I have like my dining room a table, which I, you know, there's a kitchen table that we eat at, but then I had a, another dining room table that I used to use for like, you know, inviting people over, which I haven't done in years. This is um, hilarious. Do you live with us? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, did a, you get the idea for her? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, but it's a glass table. That's why I would use it for my mixing station. Uh, and it, 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 now, like I said, this room is very, very empty because I we moved piggy sticks out of it. But it, it was like my dining room became my office, and one of the bedrooms upstairs is what is his office now, and so it's his studio with his green screen. See, I, I built a, a room out. I <clears throat> I took our dining what was our dining room, 
and converted it into my office. I put a wall up, built a nice... Her requirement was that she didn't want to lose the light. <clears throat> so we built a nice... Um, uh, or I, not we. Unless there's a mouse in my pocket, I don't know why I'm saying we. Um, I... <laughs> <laughs> I built a... Uh, a nice French door, uh, you know, entrance to the office so that the light still goes. Because on this side of the office is the uh, window to the front of the house. And it lets a lot of light in. And without, you know, with this wall up and without that window there, it really does cut down on the light. So uh, that was her one requirement. Um, and I did that. And I think it turned out really nice, actually. We, we built uh, an office. See, I gave up my office originally because we had our daughter. Um pretty late in our life but we had our daughter and and when she came along the first thing to go was my office which of course became her playroom sure. which was you know which was okay and then we moved my office up to the den and quite honestly i can probably count on one hand the amount of times i actually did anything up in the den because it's so disconnected from everything that we do in life you know like you know all of our activity is down here on this floor so I always felt like I was in some other world up there. Now, now that it, or, you know, we're a little older and, and further along in our marriage, I might be better off up in the den for, <laughs> <laughs> for some of that separation. But, but uh, uh, you know, it, it's it's nice. It really is nice having an office, you know, down here, back sort of in the in the uh, the grand scheme of things. On the same. Oh, token, it's funny because. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, ahead. no. Go ahead. Well, I say it's funny because David, the, where his studio is, is literally the opposite end of the house. And I say that we have to do that because when we're casting together, it prevents me from well, smacking him upside the head. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, my wife is in our living room, which is about 40 feet or 50 feet away from me. So it's basically the same thing. <laughs> yes. yeah. <laughs> I, I, I do this and I put two doors in between us for my own safety. <laughs> They're my safety Yes, I doors. have to... I'd have to go across the house and up the stairs to get to the studio. So it's, it's just too much effort. It's it, not worth it. <laughs> right. You can, you can just save that up and thump him later. <laughs> I, uh, you know, I admire you, though. Um, you know, the, the next step for me, of course, you know, I'm, I'm, well, you know, I run RBA Supplies. Um, and, and right now, uh, you know, we're running it out of this office, out of the home office. And the next... found? Hey, there you go. <laughs> I, I know that card. <laughs> I found it. Uh, yep. This is the one I picked up at Safe Slam. Yep. Um, and the next step for us would be moving into, you know, into leased space. And that's a big transition. That's a big move. So it's, I can, that, you know, that's why I was so excited for you a couple of weeks ago when you were announcing it. Because that's, that's a big move. I know, I know what kind of accomplishment that is. It was, and it was a big move. I mean, I was ready to kick Higgy Fix out of the house, but, you know, I just, I wanted to be sure that, you know, we definitely had enough steady income, enough steady business coming in that Higgy Fix could support it, because, well, you know, we we can't, we can't really dip into our own pockets anymore. We've, we've done, we've maxed that, that, <laughs> that well out. Sure. And, uh, you know, so it, it has to be self-sustaining. Um, and it's, uh, but, you know, we found this space, it's, it's not a very big space, but it's got a little lobby area, and it's got two offices in the lab. And it's just perfect. Um, and it's only two and a half miles from the house. <laughs> so nice, cool commute. Uh, Scuba needs to come by and see it. <laughs> Scuba, get off! Him. Scuba, get off your ass and go yeah, see. For God's sake, Scuba! The office, you bum. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! What was that? Was that was that a sound from the Hobbit? No. <laughs> I'm taking it all in. Holy cow! Yeah. There the Hobbit, is. the Hobbit is um, is, is small but powerful. You know, he just he's that he's that silent uh, warrior in the night. Um, you know, we we refer to. He, he's kind of like a he's kind of like a, a silent but deadly fart. You, you know, you know when he's there, but you know he's not real audible. Just compare a human being to a fart. <laughs> well, it's, it's the <laughs> Hobbit. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't get standard. Okay. No, 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 no. <laughs> Um, Scuba has not meant he's not responded here to this. <laughs> Scuba, <laughs> wake the business. fuck up. Where are you, buddy? Wake up. <laughs> <laughs> really, Aries? No. Nate, Nate, do you live in, the, in Gwinnett, too? 
I see. Who's Nate, picking up Nate drunk has... chicks? <laughs> Aries was in the hangout the other uh, night, right, Rage? Oh my God, yes. <laughs> what? Oh, it's long story. <laughs> long, <laughs> long story, short ending. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I, yes, but he's not. Uh, he's not responding. I'm seeing that he's a. Uh, Staying quiet. We'll yeah, he's not gonna come by. We'll have he's to. Ask, okay. Athens is um. Athens is, is, is a bit of a hike. It's not too far. It's about forty-five minutes away. Five a.m. You were. Oh my God, Aries! Holy cow! So, with the with the separated office, a question I have to ask because, um, you know, here with me, I'm on a hundred percent of the time. It's like I'm work. I typically work 22 hours a day because there's no such thing as as going home do you find that the that i mean is, is you know is there a benefit to having an office do you leave it at the office or do you do you still take it home with you actually uh, david and i just discussed this this morning um when it was here in the house it was easier to even if I was going to work, you know, 16 hours, that, you know, you're here. You can take a break and watch TV for an hour or, you know, take a break and eat. And, and being in an office, and, and <laughs> I am 41 years old. I'm, I'm, I'm proudly proclaiming I'm 41 years old. I'll be 42 in September. Um, I have never worked this much in my life. <laughs> I thought at this point in my life I'd be starting to wind it down, right? Uh -huh, and yeah. um, here I am winding it up like big time. I've never. I am routinely at the office until eight to ten o'clock at night every night, um, and uh, and I, I hate leaving my dogs at home and <laughs> I miss them and. Um, no, I mean, there are definitely benefits to it because, you know, you can get to the point where you're just like, okay, I, I can't do any more today and I'm, I'm just leaving. Um, and you can leave it there, you know, and it'll be waiting for you tomorrow. And, um, but you also know that if you're not there working it, nobody else is working it for you. Right. <laughs> right. So it's, um, it puts you in a good mindset, you know, to leave the house and go to an office and, you know, you're there to work. Uh, you know, and there's certainly less distraction, um, but it's—it's. It, I wouldn't say you're putting in any less hours. <laughs> yeah, that's that's good to know. I you know because it's the one thing for me that would seem like it would be nice would be that you you know be able to when, when you leave the office you leave the office. But I worry, and it, and you've just answered the question. That really isn't the case. You're you're away more, if anything. Yeah, um, I mean, I, I am. Like I said, I, I haven't. Well, here is the thing. Before I started working Piggy Six full time, I had managed to land an awesome contract job with Johnson & Johnson, and I was doing this. Um, it was actually an auditing uh, project for them um, with all of their manufacturing sites that uh, manufacture products through their Japan headquarters or through their Japan offices mm -hmm. and um, it was a virtual position because obviously I did not go to Japan uh, but for um, almost a year I worked from home um, doing this auditing project and uh, uh, I got very 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 spoiled you know I got spoiled being at home I got spoiled being able to kind of spend my own hours and I got spoiled with you know having being able to work with my dog right here with me and and I'm very very attached to my dog so, um, yeah, leaving them has been a little traumatic on all of us. <laughs> 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 it is, a, I mean, especially my, the, the, the dog that Suba met, Fizzgig, you, I did, there was Miha that you saw earlier, but Fizzgig, she's a tan and white sheep, too. And, Fizzgig? Um, a, the Dark Crystal? Yes, yes, huh? yes! <laughs> oh, that's awesome! Yes! <laughs> yes. <laughs> I could watch that movie in like seventh grade. That is awesome. I I loved yes. those movies, The Dark Crystal and uh, uh, Labyrinth. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, uh, not many people know that. I, it surprised me actually when I first named her that because she's a little tan and white ball of fluff. Okay. And uh, and she pitches a fit when I leave her, just like Fizzgig did. Just like Fizzgig did, right? Yeah. And uh, and so that was how she got her name. Um, 
that's uh, I thought I figured anybody over the age of 30 would have seen this movie, you know, and I'm so surprised to find out how many people have not seen it and they don't know it. So I'm, I'm very impressed that you knew her name. That's I, awesome. I actually have both of them. In fact, I, I could tell you what the, what the DVD covers look like from memory. You know, the one's kind of a purplish tent and yes. yeah, I, 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 they were fantastic movies. Absolutely. I, I the Dark Crystal and it helps it kind of a special uh, special place in my heart too because and don't ask me how we convinced our mothers of this okay I'm going to tell you a terrible story that would probably <laughs> have gotten my mother phoned into defects in today's day okay uh-huh. but we I was in the third grade when that movie came out okay um, I was no second grade third grade third grade second grade uh, okay I think that I, I remember how I was second grade you were young. I was eight. Okay, I was eight years old, and my um, and, and it had got to the point where when we went to the movies with our parents, we wouldn't sit with you know because it wasn't cool to sit with your parents. For. Oh yeah. So we would sit elsewhere in the theater, and somehow the my girlfriend and I convinced our mothers, or maybe it was my mother, her I don't know, one of our mothers, that it was useless for her to come into the movie theater because we weren't going to sit with them anyway, and that they should just let us go to the movie by ourselves. And for some reason, they bought it. <laughs> okay, I, I don't exactly like I said. I'm, I'm looking back on this now. I, like I said, and, you know, being I am, I'm not a mother, but I have a stepmother, and I'm looking on this now, and I'm thinking, oh my god, they let two eight-year-old girls walk into this movie theater by themselves and watch this movie. Like, are they insane? Mm-hmm. <laughs> right, but you, but you couldn't do that now. But then, and not that it was a long time ago, because I'm not that much younger than you are. <laughs> You could you could do that. Then. My my mom used to drop me off at the theater all the time when I was you know not maybe not eight but you know around ten or that or the nickel arcades. For those of you that are old enough, you remember what a nickel arcade was, not the quarter arcades. Yeah. Nope. Uh, you know you'd go there with Shut your face. you'd go there with five bucks to the nickel arcade and you'd be good for hours. Your your, your parents would drop you off and leave. Right, and the, and the, the theater that, that we went to, literally, you could drop off right at the front door. I mean, yeah. the only thing in between the front door was an arcade, as a matter of fact. There was a little hallway, there was an arcade, mm-hmm. and then there was this front, yeah. So they dropped us off at the front door, and, and we bought our tickets, and we went to see this movie, and then they picked us up right at the front door when the movie was over. Um, but also, too, when I went back, if any of you have seen this movie, um, it, it's, hey, you, Hargrave. it's kind of scary. It is. It's a little dark, yeah. And and I'm yeah. thinking, like I watched it again, you know, when I was in my twenties or maybe even my thirties or something, and I'm watching this movie thinking, Oh my god, I watched this movie when I was eight <laughs> You know? And of course now here's the thing too, so we thought of course we were cool, so uh, you know, we were there by ourselves and we thought it was so cool and we figured it would be so cool to sit in the very front row oh, geez. of the movie theater. <laughs> so of course I watched this movie like this. <laughs> right. And the part where Fizzgig <clears throat> makes his first appearance is when he jumps out of that hole, mm-hmm. scaring the living crap out of him. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so, yeah. it had, so it had a lasting impact on you is what you're saying. Absolutely. And I now have a dog named Fizzgig. So, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Now I want to break that movie out and watch it tonight. <laughs> oh, you have to. I mean, now I'm going like, to it's it's a scary movie. Yeah. I mean, it's really scary. I mean, the the, the creatures and everything, they're scary. And I'm like, I was eight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So, I guess we should talk a little bit about vaping, huh? Look at this no. gorgeous, gorgeous drip. That now that's, that's, uh, that, that right there looks like a dripper, Jen. That looks like you had to put some big girl panties on. I did. I did. Anybody who knows me knows that I have resisted the dripping thing the whole time. I like my tanks. I like my maintenance free dripping, or my maintenance free vaping, I should say. And I, I didn't. I didn't want to go to a dripper. And then I won this tough cap from Kia, who um, her sponsor is Just the Tip, uh, who does they do virtual tips. Is that you actually do custom design your own drip tips? And um, and it's so beautiful. It's, it's you see, it's, it's green and gold, uh, mm. green and purple with gold stripes in it. I don't know if you can see the detail. Oh yeah. But it's it's just beautiful. 
So because I had this chef cap, I had to have something to put on it. So I went and got me an Eric. And now that I have the Eric, I'm realizing that my measly little i650 is not enough power for it. And so now I'm going to go get a big girl battery. <laughs> and I'm blaming Kia. She knows this. I blame Kia. This one win is causing me to spend like $100. <laughs> <laughs> Free fucking tips. <laughs> God damn it. But, but, what about the flavor? You, you gotta admit, you get better flavor with a drip. Well, here's the thing. Tank. I, if I had, let's see if I could get David to loan me his clapper, I'm not, I'm, because the chuff cap forces you to lung inhale, um, I'm missing a lot of flavor. I really am not getting that much flavor. I need more power to get the flavor out. So <laughs> it's like, it's all Kia's fault. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Bitches love shiny. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, it's all her fault. Because now, I, like I said, I've had this thing cranked up all the way. And I know when I put, if I put this on David's copper and crank it up to like 80 or 90, it's like, oh, heaven. But with the, at 50 watts, it's just not cutting it. I need a big girl battery. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, it's funny you mentioned the clapper. That's exactly. I, I started my wife on uh, on an i stick, which she quickly outgrew, and and basically said to me, "I need something more. <laughs> Give me something that works better." Although uh, when I took her, she was so excited. This is this is a girl. I don't know. Maybe guy. I guess guys do this to some degree too. But um, she was. I'm not sure what she was more excited about, having her own device that she didn't have to keep borrowing from me. Or when she finally found the perfect matching uh, J wrap and tip. Oh my G. <laughs> I mean, it's oh like, my awesome. G. <laughs> she came back. She came back like I bought her a new car. She's like, oh my God, look, they match. They're, they were made for each other. I got them from they two were. different vendors. And... They were. They were like, oh, oh my G. Seriously. It was, it was awesome. Oh my G. Oh, my G. Yeah, oh, my G. <laughs> I know. I mean, and, and let me but look how pretty it just it looks so pretty together. Yeah. I mean, and and now that I need a big girl battery now, yeah, this 50 watts is not cutting it. And like I said, I, I put it on his pop for the other night, and I'm like, yeah, I need 90 watts. I mean, seriously. I, <laughs> I, 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 I'm like, I'll be you right know. back. <sighs> Thank you, honey. Ooh. I'm making her get me some aspirin. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get on. Don't worry. Well, I mean, but y- hey, if you'd rather, if you'd rather talk, honey, you can, you can uh, sit and bye. <laughs> but I will say this, Eric, especially. <laughs> I nice. I yeah, lock um, the door exactly, Nate. I hear you guys talk about the Eric a lot. Uh, you and and Joey over on uh, our gang. Yeah, and David has one too, and I tell you, that's the reason I got it, because I was like, if I'm going to get a dripper, you know, I had, he, he had a tote, and I tried using that, and it, and it just, I don't know, it just, I couldn't do it, it was, it made me cough, and I, I couldn't handle it, but the first time I ever drew on that Eric that he got, I mean, like, let me look at this, like, yeah, there's Pogo. <laughs> <laughs> Every time. Every time. <laughs> Paris Hilton. Thank you, honey. There she is. <laughs> is this your camera whore? Yes, this is the camera whore. Every time she gets up, he's like, oh, what? Where? Is that her name? Um, now, you, you mentioned that you started vaping about three years ago, and your husband was about four years ago. What got you? I know you said that he got you into vaping, but was it? were you a smoker before and, and, and wanted to convert? Were you a non-smoker and wanted to you know, enjoy the flavor? What, what got you into vaping? Uh, I was a smoker. Uh, I smoked for 24 years. I, um, okay. And I couldn't, even even when, uh, you know, it was too expensive, uh, I couldn't handle cheap cigarettes. I had to have the premium cigarettes. I had smoked Benson and Hedges, you know, and they're like 60, oh, I, I never bought them by the pack. I always bought them for, by the carton, but they're 60, $65 a carton. And even then, that three and a half years ago, it was, it was, they were expensive, you know, and, and, um, I never even wanted to quit. I like smoking. <laughs> I'll admit it. I like to smoke. Mm-hmm. Um, I fortu- I am one of the few, and I am very fortunate that I actually never had any health problems due to cigarettes. Um, and uh, I, I mean, I'm grateful for that. But 
you know, it was an overnight thing, really. I was, he was vaping. And as a matter of fact, I actually have, I found this, I found this a couple months ago. Look at this. This was our first device right here. A 510T. Mm, mm -hmm. Right here with the little bitty tank yep. that you put on the end here. Look at that. That's so cute. Yeah. And I, I, I think I even got it to work. Okay. <laughs> I get no flavor out of it or anything, but um, but yeah, it still works. Um, and uh, but this is what we had, and uh, I he was vaping, and I was gonna smoke. So we've been dating maybe a month, and it was December, and it was cold, and it was raining, and it was wet, and I'm like, and I was spending the weekend with him, and I was not about to stand outside in the cold and the wet to smoke. Mm -hmm. And I was like, here, let me hit that. And by Sunday night, I said, wow, I didn't even miss it. Like, I, I went two and a half days without a cigarette, and I never missed it. Mm -hmm. I bought a kid the next day. That's all she wrote. Now, what camp are you in? Are you in, uh, are you in the camp that, um, you know, that the vaping should be used as a smoking cessation device where you're trying to reduce yourself from nicotine? And ultimately quit, or are you in the camp that um, what I'm doing is better is better for my health than what I was doing, and I'm still okay with you know whatever level of nicotine I I enjoy. What which which camp are you of? Um, I certainly am not going to ever quit vaping. I don't see any reason to. Um, as far as the nicotine reduction, yeah, I've reduced it, but that's more out of necessity because these guys. Will just hit you like a ton of bricks. I mm -hmm. mean, I, ha I was I have a bunch of bottles here that are six milligrams that I can't touch with this thing because it's like, whoo, that's some spicy stuff. <laughs> 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 um, so uh, you know, I mean, I'm I'm doing like two or three in this. Um, I still do six in my tank, um, which I left at the office. I can't even show you, but um. Uh, yeah, I can do six, and you know, but I, I started at 24. I stayed at 24 for a long time. I didn't really choose to reduce it. I just kind of did because, you know, you, you know you're just finding you yourself just, not needing that extra. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I, I mean, yeah, I, I eventually figure I'll probably get down to zero and started off on 48. Holy Good crap! Lord. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you realize that's like toxic to a non-smoker, right? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, but yeah, I just, uh, I've only reduced my nicotine out of necessity. I mean, we've done our research. Nicotine hey, I'm Chris. Nicotine's what? It's not bad for you. Right. It's, it's really not. Some, there, there are even, we've seen studies, we've posted this on our Facebook page, there are some doctors out there that are using nicotine therapy for early onset Alzheimer's patients. Really? Um, because wow. it improves memory and cognition, and it can help stave off symptoms, Alzheimer's symptoms. Huh. Nicotine therapy, you know, it's really not that bad for you. What's bad for you is, you know, the other 4,000 carcinogens in a cigarette. Right. Yeah. Um, what, so, per uh, <clears throat> what percentage would you say in your business... Um, and, and, and you know, it doesn't have to be like you know, like number of bottles or anything like that per day. But like, what percentage per day uh, would you, or or in general, would you say orders that you get that are zero nick or three nick or six nick or twelve nick? Do you have you noticed trending or patterns in that? I mean, is there have you noticed like a downward a downward? Because to me, what I've seen in vaping, it seems like a lot of people. Even a year and a half ago, it wasn't uncommon for you to be vaping 12 or 20, uh, for those of us that like Murdoch vape, you know, or Murdoch liquid. Um, and it seems like now everything you hear is, you know, three, six, even one and a half and one now. What, what kind of patterns have you noticed as a, as a liquid, uh, you know, business? Definitely declining, absolutely. Um, the, the vape shop that we sell to, um, and, and we, we sell to one vape shop, um, but he has actually branched it out to um, other places as well. He's sort of being a distributor for us. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, but he, uh, yeah, he he runs out of the zeros and the threes before he runs out of anything. Um, and and I, I see that in my online sales. Um, actually, it, it actually causes me to stop and kind of take a second look when I see anything over 
six. Well, no, I'd say anything over ten, maybe. Um, you know, is that it's not. Oh, well, really? You know. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> yeah, you know, when I see it, because it's it's very it's becoming more and more rare than any you know anything over. Well, I'd say yeah, really anything over six. And I think it's because people are going to the dripping. Right. You, know? you go to dripping and you have to. I mean, uh, there's a rare person out there that drips higher than six. Yeah. No, I think you're right about that. I think definitely the, the change in devices, even tanks now um, that are functioning more like drippers, just with a reservoir, uh, you know, you, you, you get into those harder hitting devices and you just don't, you don't need yeah. yeah yeah there's a good question for you what <laughs> there she is it's all your fault kia <laughs> it's all your fault <laughs> what uh what's your what's your favorite like we all have our favorite comfort zone in terms of like when we well of course i know you don't do a whole lot of rebuilding uh, because you mostly you mostly enjoy tanks, but now that you're getting into drippers a little bit, have you found that that sweet spot for yourself yet? I, you know, I really haven't. I, I and because I, I'm limited with my devices too. I have, sure. Um, my i650 is really the the lowest. Uh, it will go down to point two. That, but um, my other devices, uh, I don't. I, I, I'm not a device collector. I, I mean, I, I'm surprised I have as many as I do. Um, I still, I mean, I, I use, I basically go back between my i650 and I have a heat vape defender, which only goes up to 25 watts and only goes down to 0.5 ohms. Mm -hmm. So, I, as currently, my Eric is actually coiled at 0.4, which means I cannot use it on my heat vape defender at all. Um, and then uh, I have my, uh, my Kinger sub tank mini, which is at, you know, 0.5. Actually, I have the rebuildable deck on it, so I think it's around 0.6 ohms. Um, so it's, it's really just defined by my devices at this point. I haven't really gotten into no, you know, knowing exactly what lower ohms or is going to give me yet. I haven't been able to play with that yet. Mm -hmm. I always find like my sweet spot, and I keep trying to go lower, and I'm just not happy. I love like around the 0.8 to 1 range, which I know makes me strange for a lot of drippers, but. Uh, you know, because a lot of them tend to go down below that, but that's where I really love being. I couldn't, I couldn't read what that said. I'm answering DJ. It's Fifty, it's maxed out. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not enough. I it's need more fault. battery. There she is, that's Kia. I'm answering her. It's your fault, Kia. So, you need so more DJ, power. so DJ is who, uh, who you won the tip from. It is. It's all her fault. It's all her fault because she gave you a remarkable tip. <laughs> it was so pretty, though. It is a great-looking tip, actually. I'm really it's impressed so with it. It's so pretty. <laughs> yeah. And it doesn't get hot. It doesn't transfer heat at all. It's still very cool to the touch, whereas the air is just not. <laughs> I'll be back in one second, guys. We'll we'll try to uh, we'll try to you know keep the volume up here uh, you know with the void of you being gone, Hobbit. Thanks, <laughs> I appreciate that. I mean, we'll try Filling to come up. Me, we'll, we'll try to come up with some kind of content to talk about, my <laughs> friend. You know, <laughs> <laughs> Hobbit is our we, we I you know I love the guy. He's he's actually a, he's an awesome kid, but uh, he's we we always razz him because he he's more of a listener uh, when he gets in front of a camera. And, in person, I mean, my wife wasn't joking. He, he's he's not witty. Quiet. He's not. He's <laughs> witty. He's smart. You put him in front of a camera, and and, and you you know he, he gets Bobby. a little quiet. Sorry. This is oh. Fizzgig. This is Fizzgig. Say, say hi to the I would say Fizzgig is the perfect name for him. Oh my god, that dog is so cute. <laughs> <laughs> This is her. It is, she is a girl, and I know Fitzgig is, I think, was a boy from the movie. I don't know. We never actually really okay. know if a boy or girl, but yeah. she's a girl. Yes. And, and DJ, I, I agree with you completely. Uh, DJ out in the audience says, Rage, the higher resistance that you build, the more flavor that I seem to get when I crank that wattage up. I love 0.5 to 1 ohm range. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, for me, you know, I, I'd love to 
say that I'm <laughs> chasing the cloud or whatever. I could care less. To me, it's all about the flavor. Um, and I still get great clouds, but the flavor has to be there for me, or what's the point of what we're doing? So uh, could I get better flavor if I built a high Kia? If I build higher ohms on this, would I get better flavor out of the 50 watts? Well, what what ohm are you at right now? It's at 24. Yes. Yeah. If you you know you could go a higher, a little higher ohm, and you could go higher. Well, you could go the same watts, but it's gonna it's gonna deliver more flavor to you. Uh, the lower ohms you're gonna that you build at, you're gonna get a hotter vape, and it tends to it tends to to mute the flavor a little bit more. That's why. Um, uh, well, it, it depends on how you look at the flavor. It'll it'll mute it in some senses in that it it won't be as flavorful, but it's more of a punch in your face kind of dull flavor when you're at that lower wattage, like in a point two or a point four. That's why a lot of uh, real low drippers will go with very little flavor in their in their juice because they're getting so much vapor that it's it's overwhelming. But it's not necessarily more flavorful. I don't know. I want I want to get more flavor out of this. And so like my my flavor tester I have is this little itty bitty tiny little smoke tack dripper. Mm -hmm. And I currently have like a little micro coil on it right now. And I think it's at like a twenty twenty eight. Mm -hmm. And I use it on my little i620, you know, just a little something to test flavors on. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know, so it's and, and that that does fine, you know, because that that can, you know, the more you use it, the hotter it gets. You know, kind of retains a little bit of heat in there, and then it gets a little bit hotter, and the more flavors come out. And you know, but it was, you know, the coils are already kind of, I don't know. The guy said he couldn't get it any higher than 0.4, and I'm I am prepared to prove him wrong because I'm going to recoil this bad boy. Oh, I'm sure you can get it higher than a point four. It may just be that he's listen. Like some people, like Nitro, for example, is practically incapable of building anything above a point four because everything he builds is in like sub point zero ones. It's uh, so for him, like to build a, a over a point four is like you know scratching nails on a chalkboard. But it's <laughs> it's definitely it's definitely possible, and and I think that you'll find that you know uh, that you will get a little more uh, flavor out of that. The other thing I've got to do, I've got to hook you up with some uh, some Ready X Wick and get you to try that as well, because that'll I do want to try the Ready X Wick. I do. I've, I've heard about it and that it's, it's is it washable or is it? Uh, yeah. Because I know you can use it forever in a day, like, and it doesn't get burnt or something. It, yeah, it, exactly. It it, uh, it handles temperatures over 2,600 degrees, so wow. you can quite literally, you know, here's a piece of Ready X Wick, here's a torch. You know, I could sit here all day long for the rest of the show and just, you know, torch this wick directly, literally, until it glows orange. Uh, and I could just sit here, wow. keep I, I could keep on this for, for you know, 20 hours uh, and, and then let it cool down and vape on it. And you wouldn't taste any of, you know, it, it doesn't burn. It doesn't, it doesn't char, it doesn't burn. Um, which is what makes it really nice because you don't have that worry anymore. And it's ceramic, so it doesn't carry flavor. Uh, it, it, or rather, doesn't doesn't affect the flavor. It doesn't change the flavor because it it uh, it, it just doesn't affect it. But it's pretty cool stuff. Yeah, okay. it looks very cool. D. Millen, he's 10 miles away and he's probably sleeping by now. So he's not going to sit down next to me. He's sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> you can talk about him. That's like my 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 wife uh, uh, sat down. The, oh yeah, Jenna, I was telling you about this the other day when my when you were up broadcasting with Scuba. Um, you may have met my wife. I don't know if you were there. when you went and sat next to Scuba, honey. Was it was who was with him? He, he nobody. He was by himself. Oh okay. 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 Because okay. I found out that I didn't even realize this that that you guys were like three booths away. Because I spent actually I went over to hang out with Scuba and he was like. Here, take over, you know, like oh, another host, right? And so he said, "Here, take over." He got up and he started bouncing around all over the place. Yeah. And I sat down and, and I started casting. Um, and you know, oh, he's PM. back. There's Scuba. There he There's is. Scuba. He's making fun of me. <laughs> and yeah, and so and and you know, and I mean, it was fun, you know. But I, I sat there and, and a couple of hours actually, where I, where I probably sat there and casted on VU Live uh, for, for Slam. 
I kind of find out, you know, you guys are like three booths away. I remember the white tent. I completely yeah, we were, the we were, tent. we were literally yeah. the very first. Ba- like when you went go down, went down the stairs, we were the first booth right there at the bottom of the stairs. So, yeah, I mean, I we were, totally couldn't know. couldn't be closer. It was pretty funny. And I remember uh, while we were there, I remember here somebody asked me. I don't remember who it was, of course, but somebody asked me, "Who in the hell is broadcasting right now?" <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. I'm in this booth, and they're you know a hundred <laughs> feet away from me, and there's a wall between us. How the hell would I know that? And, and they're like, well, I don't know. It's some some girl. <laughs> like, look, I, I that don't know. That narrows it down. <laughs> but and now, of course, now of course, I I realize that it was you that was that was broadcasting. So you are officially some girl, Jen. <laughs> some girl. You're some girl. I'm so girl. Yeah, I, I think a vapor Joe came up at one point, and he's like, "I don't know who any of you are. Why are you casting on my channel?" <laughs> <laughs> or he knew one person. And that person was like, "Well, this is so and so. This so and so. This is Jen from Piggy Sticks." And yeah, you know, I was like, "Okay." Yeah, so. And he was like, "Okay," and then he walked away. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Yeah, scuba one and someone had Doctor Pepper. It was super charged. <laughs> 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 scuba was scuba was pretty happy himself that weekend he was uh that first day he <laughs> had a good time <laughs> so scuba now that you're in the room uh why haven't you visited uh jen over at higgy sigs yet at her new office yeah. buddy what the hell I'm calling you out slacker your you're like what 10 10 miles away get your ass in your car yep. and go say hi to her and you know sometime in the next couple of days you can be out and about, you know, or on your way home from work or whatever. You, you know, know, I mean, you you could bring the lady a coffee one of these nights, Scuba. You know, just saying. You know, you could bring oh, her. I can you know. fix that, Scuba. You'll see. He's going to blame it on me. I can fix that right <laughs> now. Here we go. Busted. Clickety, clickety, typeity. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so you mentioned uh, you mentioned Boom. being at Slam. Uh, <laughs> What? Boom. <laughs> Boom. I sent him the address. Oh, well, there you go. Now, see, now you're you're on the hook, buddy. You're on the hook. <laughs> He's like, damn, I wish I should have gone to sleep. Right. <laughs> yeah, no excuse now, exactly. My 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 car broke down. My uh yeah. it's Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right on Indian Trail Scuba, I know you'd be driving that way every day. Come on. That's funny. Now you mentioned Vapor Slam that you went to. Do you how many how many events would you say you get to uh, each year? I that was our first. Your first ever? Um, it was. We actually had tried. Something kept coming in the way. Um, it was what was it? What was the one that was here? Vapor Palooza. Uh huh. Um, yeah. That one. I don't know what we just we're not tuned in or something because we didn't find out about that one until like the day before. And we were like, well, okay, you know, that was kind of a late notice kind of thing. And then um, there was, uh, blah, 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 blah. there was VCCTN, which we were all set to go to. I mean, like, ready to go, getting, like, I even got, we got up early and everything. I had been battling a, a, a cold for the previous week. And but I was actually feeling better. But you know how when you get to the end of your cold, is there a limit to the number of capital packs? No, not at all. Just please only choose three flavors per sample pack. But yeah, no, knock yourself out. Order all of them. <laughs> 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 um, um, and I had been uh, battling a cold the previous week. And But you know how when you get to the end of a cold, even though you're feeling better, your cough sounds worse? Right, yeah. Yes. And I woke up that morning, and I was all ready to go early to go so we could, because Chattanooga is only about two and a half, three hours away. Sure. And we were all set to go, and uh, David was like, have you heard yourself? He's like, <laughs> I, we're not leaving the house, okay? You do not need con crud on top of what you've already got. And, uh, okay, so we didn't go to VCCTN. And then there was VCCT, which, which we weren't, we weren't going to make it to. But there was, oh, there was another one. Up near Chattanooga, I think Phoenix City something, Phoenix City Vapors, or or there I can't I can't remember exactly what that one was, but that was uh, near Chattanooga, and um, can't remember what ha- something else happened too. Cause things kept coming up, you know, we could not make it, and so I was like, look, we are going to slam, 
<laughs> we are going to slam. You picked a great I one. I am contagious. <laughs> <laughs> I was not mask, contagious. <laughs> damn it. What'd you What'd you think about Slam? Um, I. <laughs> I mean, it was it was fun. I'm not gonna say it wasn't fun. It was, but I can you know it's one of the things where like we wanted to check it out. I was like, okay, is this something we want to actually be a vendor at? And I'm. I'm like, wow, you know, it would be so easy to get buried, you know, lost. There's so many juice vendors, and you'd have to put so much effort into it. That I, I'm just like, I don't know if it would be worth it, you know? I mean, yeah, you get a lot of exposure, but there's so many there. I mean, I know there are booths that I didn't even approach while I was there, and mm -hmm. I'm sure there are great booths. I'm sure they had great stuff, but... yeah. I'm actually I'm actually working on something and I haven't even announced it to anybody yet. Um, Don't. And I'm not going to. I'm not going to. But what That's I will say, what I will say though, this is the tease. Um, I have found a way to solve that problem, and 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 it's a, it's a very exciting way uh, of solving that problem in a in a in a fun uh, fashion for exactly that issue. And, and, um, you know, cause you're right. It, it's, you know, those events, there's so many booths, there's so many vendors, there's so much space, there's so much going on that even for so, even when somebody comes by your booth, um, you know, it's tough to get their attention. It's tough to, cause there's just, yeah. you know, especially let's face it, like half of it, half of vapors are like severely ADD. So yeah. <laughs> even, you know, yeah. Even uh, even if they're at your booth, they're still easily distracted, you know, to, to somewhere else. Um, Absolutely. I mean, the, the only ones, and I can even tell you, the only ones that stood out to me were j Rap, mm -hmm. um, Just the Tip, and um, the Cotton Man. And that's because they were different. <laughs> yep. You know, they were just, they were really different from everybody else. And, and, you know, I mean, there were, I mean, there were other people there that I remember seeing, of course, and other vendors I remember seeing, but... They're the ones that really stood out. I mean, actually, as a fact, David bought a Lancia there, and I don't even remember who he bought it from. Like, I don't remember. I don't even remember what vendor it was. And uh, you know, but but I remember. I remember very clearly. Just Jay Rapp, just the step and the Cotton Man. Right. They're very different. And that's just it. It's you know, you want to you want to do something to stand out. Um, but it it takes it does it takes a lot of effort. Now I think that a lot of the benefits to those types of events. I don't think a juice maker so much uh, makes a profit at the event. Typically, uh, you know, it's not that they're making a profit making you know retail sales while you're there. Uh, I think that generally speaking, nowadays this has changed in the last in the last couple of years, but nowadays I think that generally speaking, a liquid manufacturer typically loses money by doing the event. Um, at the event, meaning it, it's going to cost you for the booth. You're probably not going to make a lot of money at that booth, but what you gain is exposure. First of all, for customers to uh, connect with you later, and then secondly, you gain a lot of really valuable contacts for wholesale accounts. Uh, and you get that because a lot of stores are flying to these events and they're trying these different juice companies, um, like your own, for example. Uh, and and you may not have ever made that connection with that person if you didn't have a booth, you know, in in a in an event like that. We did we did bring a couple of big bottles with us so people could come. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, here. Would you like some? <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Oh, here. Take a card. <laughs> yeah. so. Take yeah. it. Shut up and take it. Take it. Damn it. Shut <laughs> up. Um. But I think that you know that's that's I think that's where, for me in in my business, um, you know, we did pretty well, uh, you know, at at Vapor Slam with our booth, we did pretty well. We made a, a fairly you know a fairly decent profit, uh, and of course, you know, we're vapors. We're never supposed to say we actually make a profit. We're supposed to act like we're, you know, starving and not making any money. But. Um, <laughs> For some reason, I find that you know, and maybe I don't, I don't know what it is about vapors, but for some reason, they don't like to hear about companies making profit. But you know what? If you're a good company and you do good work, it's okay. You you, you should make a you know you well, should make a profit. Yeah, I I I, I did a rant on my show a few weeks back, and it was just uh, 
just because I had kind of gotten rubbed the wrong way, I, I, I realized that there were a couple people who had good wine. Because we like to give our juice away, but we, you know, we give our juice away on these shows. And, uh, you know, because we believe in our juice, and we believe that if you try it, that you'll come back and you'll spend a little money with us. Right. You know? Absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, why else would we be doing this, right? Um, and, uh, and 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 I don't I don't even know if any of these people in the room. I'm not even gonna check. I was just saying I noticed there's a couple people who basically have won from us like three or four times, not in you know consecutively, but like over the course of maybe six months, and they never once spent a dime with us. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, look, <laughs> like, look, we're not trying to get rich quick. Okay, we're not trying to make a million dollars. We're not trying to rip anybody off, but we are trying to make a living at it. Okay, right. you know, we have bills to pay. We have, you know, now two residences to keep up with. We have, you know, we have to buy bottles. We have to buy, you know, the ingredients that go in the juice, and we have to buy flavors, and you know, we have to buy syringes, and we have to buy all these supplies. Um, it's not up to us to support your juice habit. Okay, you know, don't keep taking wins from us and never spending any money with us. Yeah. You know, I mean, come on. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's it, it's it is unfortunate, and and you know I myself I gave a lot of thought to this. I don't know. I guess it was a couple of months ago. So it, it, actually, it was specifically, and I don't remember what the time frame was still, but I do remember the event. It was when Mark Vaughn was basically telling anybody who had a problem with people winning multiple times that they were stupid. And and I and I remember being angry with him at first because it's like, well, who the fuck are you to tell me? That I'm that I have to give somebody something when they're ungrateful when they've won you know ten other times. Who the fuck are you? I mean, the whole purpose of giving out these products is in order for new people to try them and hopefully come back and buy. But then I yeah. started thinking about it with what with one, one of the things that he said, and and I forget how he approached it, but it was basically that, um, and this was. Honestly, this is what gives me sanity uh, with with when I do giveaways, uh, and and what makes me not so much care anymore about who gets them per se. I'm not. I I, I no longer look at a giveaway as trying to gain a potential customer. Uh, I look at doing giveaways as one, just simply giving back to the community. Of course, we all are. You know, we all say that. We all mean that. And of course, we, you know, we're supposed to say it because you know that's the right thing to say, right? Uh, but at the end of the day, of course, we hope, realistically, obviously, we hope that it turns into profit. Um, so aside from that, uh, you know, n now I just I, I look at giveaways as payment for that uh, advertisement. You know, when when I speaking when, of which, when I do a giveaway, I'm I'm talking about the company. I'm talking about my company. They're getting exposure, and you know who that you know. It's kind of like when you pay for advertisement to a company, money to a company to advertise you, you don't care what they spend the money on or who gets it or whatever. All you care is you got that exposure. And that's kind of what I look at my product now is more or less like that. It's that I'm paying for that airtime and the, the non-business owner of me gets offended when, you know, somebody takes a win 15 times, um, and doesn't ever buy. <laughs> But it, the the rational business person in me has to kind of step back and say, okay, I, ha I have to be okay with it. As, as, yeah. as, as crappy as it is, I would never do that. You know, I, I try to buy from the companies that I get, you know, giveaways from to support them because I appreciate, you know, what they're doing. Um, but I don't know. It, it's... But speaking of which, I think we should give away some juice. You know what? You know what? Uh, that'd be great if, if you'd like to do that. Why not? <laughs> And, and, and that'll give me a chance to show off my uh, my, my tool that I'm building. I'm not oh, all, that's right. I'm not, I heard about this. Yeah, yeah. I'm not all the way done with it yet. But, Jen, I tell you what, I know you're going to love it. Because I know how you, you know, I know your spreadsheet. And I, and I, and I, I like your spreadsheet because it's, cause it's, you know, better than the crappy system that exists. I don't know. Sometimes it keeps throwing up the same name, just like the, uh, just, just like well, the randomizer I, does. I use I use a um, I, I use a cryptographic algorithm for the randomizer. It can't physically pull up the same name. Uh, I mean, it could do it from it could it could it could pull up the same name from one drawing to the next, 
but like in the same right. drawing, you would it would never allow the same name to get pulled up again. And quite honestly, I've tested it and tested it and tested it, and I don't see any kind of patterns uh, from even from drawing to drawing. It's totally random. It's awesome. Yeah. Uh, and there's a lot of fun ways you can do it. Let me pull that up. And uh, so you, you you would like to do one? You said. Yes, I would love to give away a All right. pack. Awesome. Let me see if this will. Uh, there we go. So there's a giveaway. I've actually had it running uh, throughout the show uh, so far in the show. Oh, cool. Like this tab that we're on now, Jen, is the active winner or active chatter tab. This kind of shows us in the room how many people have been actively chatting uh, throughout since the time that I opened it. Now, if I were to wow. change if I were to change this and I said I wanted to only include people in this drawing that were active in the last, say, five minutes, I just put a five there. And you'll notice, oh, oops, I need to start. Uh, you'll notice that it goes automatically down to 25 people. So in the last five minutes, 25 people have chatted. If I change that to, say, two minutes, uh, well, of course, now people are starting to type in there, so 27. <laughs> Everybody's suddenly typing. Oh, wait, I need to type. Um, but, but the great thing about it does, about what it does, though, is it gets people's attention because they, you know, they, you know, to me, a good show is a show when the audience is interacting with you and when you get to have the opportunity yeah. to interact with them. And this kind of helps that happen. So this is the first kind of giveaway that we could do if you'd want to is just a, a purely based on a random selection of, uh, you know, who is in the room and who's chatting. Um, we could also do uh, a different kind of giveaway, which is a keyword giveaway. Uh, so Nate for that. Nate does talk too much. Look at that, 126 posts. Nate, what? Oh, yeah, I mean, look at this. Yeah, yeah, look at Nate. Nate here, 127 Nate posts. Uh, let's, let's take a look and see who else has been real active so far. Uh, oh, well, Aries, 101 posts, you know, uh, he's the blabbermouth, but we love him. <laughs> um, it, it, it is kind of fun, though, to see, you know, who's participating a lot. There's Nate at 128, Scuba at 46, uh, Squeege, although he doesn't actually talk in voice. Evidently, he talks like a madman in chat. <laughs> what the fuck, Squeege? <laughs> I'd like to compensate, okay? <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Come on, man. Uh, yeah, this it's it's funny. Awesome. Are you gonna? Are, I mean, at some point, is this gonna be like? A I am going to, like to be giving this. I'm gonna release this to all hosts, and all hosts uh, will be able to use it for free. Um, oh, the way. This is amazing. Uh, and that's actually I've just announced that li quite literally right now. Right <laughs> so, now. Uh, I, I I haven't I haven't decided uh, up until now. I hadn't decided. Uh, you know, whether I would just keep it for our network or whether I would, uh, you know, allow other hosts to use it or whether I would, you know, somehow sell it. And what I've decided to do on it is, as you see, there's these four advertisements uh, advertisements down here on the bottom. Uh, so Look at that, I, rbasupplies.com. Who'd have yep. Uh, so <laughs> I'm, I'm going to, you know, those four advertisements will be up and that will be the requirement that if you're going to use, you know, my, my randomizer that you display those because I will sell that ad space and that helps pay for the work that I put into the tool. So is this, is this actually like a website that you're, uh, right now it's an it app program or? right now it's a program. Yeah. Right now it's an application. Uh, so when you first start it up, you select what network, uh, you want it to monitor. And then it starts listening to the monitor, to the to the network that you want it to listen to. Wow. So in this case, VU Live, or in your case, you know, you you change it to our, uh, our gang. Um, and here's <laughs> so that's this is one kind of one kind of one we could do. The keyword though is also really cool. Uh, for example, let's say that we wanted to give away, you know, in this case, Higgy Six. So let's say that the keyword we wanted to have people type was Higgy, H-I-G-G-Y. And we said, okay, anybody who's interested in Higgy Sigs, we click start. Anybody who's interested in Higgy Sigs, type Higgy in the room. Automatically, it's going to capture uh, everybody who has typed in the room that particular keyword so that you know when you're giving away something specific that this would work really good for a specific product like Higgy Sigs or yeah, if you're giving <laughs> or if you're giving away uh, you know like if you're giving away starter kits for example you know an experienced person wouldn't have any use for it but a new person might you know you put in starter if somebody's new or type the keyword could be new or whatever you want it to be and then you can draw from this list based on people's interest in specifically <laughs> what you're giving dogs. away That's cute. pretty cool huh 
Yeah, I know, right? I think and it, it doesn't do it. matter. You can type in Higgy 15,000 times. It doesn't matter. You're yeah. only going to yeah. be showing up once, so... And that's and that's just it. Right. Yeah, everybody uh, when when they type yeah, in Higgy, when they type in Higgy, it will only count. It only <laughs> counts one time per person. So as soon as a person's name has been registered as saying you know whatever the keyword is, that person is in there one time, one time only. See, uh, I'm a fucker. That's not going to work. It's not. There's no Y on there. It's not going to put you in there. Higgity higgity. I mean higgity higgity higgity. <laughs> <it's awesome. laughs> <laughs> but it's not gonna work. Oh my god! I know. I always feel like getting higgy with it. You know, so that's getting right. Higgy with it. So getting that's, higgy with it. That's right. Oh my gosh! This is. Awesome. Okay, so now, but, but I wish my husband was still awake. He would still <laughs> love it. <laughs> As they say in the info commercials, uh, but wait, there's more. Um, let's say you're in a room and you want to, uh, you know, because a lot of hosts like to do the random number drawings. And, you know, because they just feel that that's more uh, organic, I, say. I like the number game. Yeah, exactly. So one of the restrictions to numbers, of course, is when you do it in a regular room, first of all, if you have a room of 100 people and everybody types a number, it's tough to find yeah. the... Don't put the numbers in yet, guys. Um, it's it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's well 22. You guys are awesome. 22 is my number. They they, all, they know my, my favorite number is 22. Um, <laughs> But anyway, so when you're in a room with, say, 100 people and you have everybody throwing in numbers, you know, it's, it's a pain in the ass, right, to go back and figure out who it is that won because you've got to find the closest number that didn't go over and all that kind of stuff. Yes. And you're limited, really. And people keep talking and it keeps jumping and you can't yeah, yell. Yeah. Exactly. And you're limited because, you know, really finding one closest number is hard enough. Let's say you wanted to do a drawing where you were giving away three things, for example, and you wanted to do it to the three closest to the number without going over in this our tool we can put in there uh, everybody for example put in a random number between one and a hundred I'll click start and from now once you click start it starts listening so go ahead and put in a random number people between one and a hundred it's going to automatically uh, capture the number that they put in and the benefit to it is is that it only captures the number once so even if somebody puts in like five different numbers it's going to capture their first number that they put in so there's no cheating it automatically eliminates that nope. um, and Don't then try to be a fucker. <laughs> and then uh, the, be an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> and then the cool thing about it is uh, so like let's say that we were ready to stop <laughs> And <laughs> now, guys, this th what I'm going to do now is not going to be the winner. So let me just make that clear. I'm going to draw a winner, but this is not going to be the winner. This is an example. Not the actual winner. Yes, this is an example. So Disclaimer. I would, I would click stop when I was ready for somebody to stop. Um, what did I do? Oh, shit, I accidentally clicked it twice. Damn it. Uh, start again, guys. <laughs> All right, guys, again. go ahead and put numbers in there again. I'm a bonehead. I double clicked. <laughs> Can we start now? Bye. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> give me give me a bunch of random numbers, guys. Okay, perfect. Um, so, let's say that now I'm ready. I'm only going to click stop one time this time instead of two like a bonehead. And uh, we have, as we can see, 30 funny. some odd people in the drawing. I'm going to do not only say, let's say I want to do three winners. I just put in three and click select winners. The lucky number is 23. And the three closest were Aries, Condensation, and Miss Faye automatically captures them and we so see did that you put that lucky number in there or did no when i when i clicked on select uh winners it automatically does a random number based on your your uh, start and your stop number so you, you know it could have been a thousand you know like if i had changed this say to 1000 and i clicked start you know that's that one's 91 um 81, 90, oh, it's, you know what, it's still going to capture it because we need to start a new drawing. But if I had started it at 1,000 when I hit start and then did a random wow. number, it would capture it automatically and, and pull in the, the number. Now, let's say, let's say for example, that um, somebody came in and said, you know what, let's double it. Let's, let's give away six instead of three. Now, you notice we already have three winners here, right? If I change the number of winners to six and I do select winners, then boom, it automatically is going to adjust and capture. It doesn't lose the first three that were already in there. It just adds the three that needed to be replaced or needed to be added. So we can... Kind of cool, huh? That, I, like it. I am so upset that my husband is missing this. 
I mean, this is like an IT person's wet dream. Uh, well, see, this is this is this is where this is where uh, you know a lot of years uh, came from. Uh, you know, being in IT that that kind of got me into doing this. Now, let's say that there was actually I see that there's a little error here, so I need to. I need, oh, that's because I did between one and a thousand, and that right. person. Um, actually, I don't know why that two twenty two showed up. I'm gonna have to fix that. Um, but let's say that we had this, for example, where we... That's why it's not released yet. People, calm the hell down. <laughs> yeah, I'm still in development. <laughs> I think, I think it was... Look at this fucking rig! Seriously, calm the fuck down. <laughs> yeah. I swear to God. <laughs> and there she goes. Yeah, it, it's, and, it, and it's not done yet. I'm, I mean, the, the, the... I'm actually surprised to see that 20, 222. I'm guessing it's because I clicked it so many times. Because we were going... For a while there, we were right. going clicking and clicking and clicking with the winners, trying to make the <laughs> thousand go. Um, but let's say I wanted to move this person. Let's say they wanted a PIF. Then you just click on, you highlight their name and click on move back to viewer pool. So that person goes back into the viewer pool. And the advantage of it is now that they're back in the viewer pool for this drawing, that person won't be drawn again because they've already indicated that they wanted a PIF. That's telling you that they don't want to win. So it removes their, their name from the remainder of this drawing. You can also, for the shows that only want to have one win per show, instead of clicking, like let's say that we were we were done, and let's say that these all five of these people uh, were five people that actually wanted this prize, uh, then you would just click highlight their names and you'd click on remove selected from remainder of show. Now I'm not going to do that because we're going to actually do a, a real drawing here in a little right. bit. But if you clicked on remove selected from remainder of show that prevents them from being drawn again for the rest of the show while this is running so that you don't have to run into duplicates hitting over and over and over. So cool. <laughs> it gets better. Um, one of the other things that I'm working on now, and this is the piece that isn't done yet, but is the, the prize pool. Um, so on the prize pool, let's say for example, like here's one of our winners. Uh, let's say that we wanted to move all five of these winners. We wanted to confirm them. That's going to when, we, when I clicked on confirm all winners, that moves them automatically over here into the prize pool. And then they're going to have two options, right? Uh, you can click on the person's name, and then here in the prizes. So for example, I'm going to import a prize list. So let's say Higgy uh, Sigs um, sample pack. Okay. So then click to import. That adds the prize, the list of prizes for whatever your show is, and there might be five or ten different prizes, whatever it is. What you're what, what you're going to be able to do, and this is the part that I'm working on right now, is you'll be able to click on the person's name, click on the prize that they won, and say either manually select prize so that confirms it, and then puts it into an email or puts it into a text file so that it's all documented for the end of your show. Uh, and uh, you can also do a fun thing that I'm doing. Uh, which is going to be a, a viewer prize roulette where it'll utilize the randomizer to cycle through the prizes. It'll listen to whoever's name you have highlighted for them to say stop. And when they say stop, whatever prize it's on at that time is what prize they would win. So they're in control of their own destiny for their prize. Pretty cool shit, huh? Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> so, so that's why it's taking a little bit of time for me to develop this, and, and I'm, I'm, like, I'm, I'm just David about. David would need a tissue right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm just about done with it, but I think it's, I think it's gonna be, I think it's gonna be awesome, uh, you know, for for what we do here as hosts, um, because it, it really gives us that control uh, and gives us those extra functions and abilities that. Because we look, we all love to give stuff away. It gets frustrating when you, when you're giving it, and there's a million piffs, or or you know, uh, or it keeps drawing the same names, or you know, you or don't the have. Fact is, honestly, the fact of the matter is, is that, I mean, we sponsor a lot of shows. We sponsor a, a lot of them at our gang. We sponsor shows on other channels, uh -huh. and it's getting to the point where it's hard to find somebody in the room who hasn't already won. Exactly. <laughs> you know? Exactly. Yeah, I mean. I have a winner's list, you know, I keep a track of it for every 30 days, you know, and I try to, you know, try to make sure that I'm spreading it around and, and that people don't win more than once in 30 days. And sometimes it gets it's like, oh, well, oh, no, you don't qualify. Oh, no, you don't qualify. Oh, sorry. Nope. You don't qualify. You know, it, it's, 
Well, and see, and you're going to like one of the other things that I'm actually adding to the tool next, uh, which is along with the remove from this drawing, remove from this show, there's also going to be a remove uh, from all drawings. Uh, and that's going to be an importable list. So, for example, if you, because you said you maintain a list of your spreadsheet of eligible people, if you, oh, yeah. got, I'm going to have a, a, the ability to copy and paste, uh, just like I did the prize list in here, into that list of whatever so that it automatically excludes the people that just simply aren't eligible and it won't even draw them in the first place and tell them uh, because you've removed them from it. So you don't even uh, have to deal with that anymore. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Mind uh, blown. <laughs> Mind blown. Confetti everywhere. Oh, oh yeah. my gosh. That is so amazing. Yeah. So. <laughs> Where I'm working hard, uh, you know, to get it uh, to get it done, um, but you know, and I'm making a lot of really great progress on it. I'm not that far at all. I'd say maybe another week away. Uh, I just need to go through and, and finish getting it built, and then that and then you know then starts all the 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 um, you know stress testing, like that 222 that came up. I'm going to need to figure out why that came up because it shouldn't have. Um, so, but uh, yeah, we're about a, I'm about a week away from releasing it, and I don't well, think. That I don't think. I mean, what what do you think about these ads on the bottom? Is it you know are they too intrusive? Are they okay? Uh, no, no, I, I no, I think they're fine. Because because what I'm going to do with the ads is like I said, I you know, the benefit to those is that any of the vendors that want to get advertising, they'll be able to buy ad space down there. Uh, it runs the ads for for 30 seconds, and then cycles to a new ad. Uh, with the exception of that first spot, which is, of course, my ad, which, damn it, I'm going to be there. <laughs> so, Absolutely. Um, fucking build it. I'm going to put my fucking ad right there. That's right. Um, Absolutely. And, and I, you know, I put in that, in that first spot. Actually, there is a reason for me being there, not just because I'm there, but I also need that that just came up right now, the advertise here. They're going to need to know where to go. Vendors are going to need to, need to know where to go if they want to be included, uh, you know, in this ad space. So I kind of had to have a dedicated spot for that. But uh, I think it's I think it's going to be uh, a big hit. So yeah, with that, D. Millen, uh, D. Millen just said that thing kind of kind of uh, kicks your little spreadsheet ass. I said that thing spanks my spreadsheet. Well, right right now, this is about uh, this is roughly about seven or eight thousand lines of code uh, to make this happen, and I probably have another three or four thousand lines left, uh, and then I go, you know, then I'll tweak it and and uh, you know uh, make it as efficient as possible. But uh, it's a lot of work. I mean, this isn't something that you just kind of throw together and you know it, it's done in five minutes. I mean, it's my wife has has glared at me on several occasions because. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I I eat dinner and I come right back in here and start working on it again. And but uh, I think it's I think it's gonna be eat dinner in in there. Yeah, sometimes. I swear to God, if he gives this to people and they don't fucking use it, I will fucking come to your house. <laughs> I will use you fucking it. come okay. to your house. She will find you. Sit down. She, with you. I, I will, will find, find you. you. I swear to God, I will find you. I'm like, Kidding. Do I look like I'm fucking kidding? Well, the model, <laughs> the, the the model of it is great, really, because you know, like I said, I, I wanted to make it free for hosts because we donate our times our time as it is. Uh, I when I first started building it, I kind of kind of contemplated, you know, do I want to sell this? Do I want to you know just give it away? You know. Um, and then quite frankly, I put, I put so much work into it. It really just didn't make sense not to make some, you know, to do something to make some kind of, uh, profit on it. I would buy this. <laughs> well, and, 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 a, and a lot of hosts and a lot of hosts would quite frankly. Um, but you know, we as hosts, we already give so much of ourselves, uh, to our audiences. You know, we give some, we give our time, we give our dedication, you know, we, we really give a lot uh, to do what we do as hosts. And I didn't want to take money from hosts who are already doing a great thing for the community. Uh, so that's why I put the advertisements in there. I figured it's a great way for companies to get the, you know, get their products out there a little bit more. Um, <laughs> what? <laughs> she went to type scuba like and she said suckba. Suckba. <laughs> you go suckba. Like right okay. yeah, right, there so, you go, scuba. You haven't given away that fan yet. 
<laughs> right. So we're gonna give away Scuba's. We're gonna give away Scuba's fan tonight. <laughs> Uh, so Jen, I will leave it up to you. What kind of give or what kind of drawing would you like to do? The random, the keyword, uh, the random number. What do, What do you want to do? I want the I want the keyword. Okay, so we're gonna, I want keyword. Yeah, we'll get a Higgy, keyword. A we'll Higgy prepare thing. for next. I'm gonna prepare for next drawing. Oops, I need to stop first. Prepare oh. for next drawing, <laughs> and we want them to type in. What do you want, Higgy? Yeah. Okay. So we'll do Higgy. So anybody who is interested in trying some of this amazing juice, and it is very good juice. I can attest to it myself. Uh, I've got three bottles right here. I've got my Pegasus Tears, uh, Higgy's Crispy Rice uh, R crispy rice Bites. That one I have not tried yet. Uh, oh, I that's have... uh, Kia's favorite. Oh, is it? Nice. Oh, yeah. She's hooked on that one. And then I've got uh, uh, Higgy's Pacific uh, Coast Salad. This is really, really good if you like a, like a fruity type vape. Uh, same with the, the Pegasus Tears. I'm I'm not sure which one I like more, the Pegasus Tears, uh, you know, or the Pacific Coast Salad. They're both really good. And then, and and I'm really picky about this, um, the peanut butter one. I don't know where I put the bottle. Um, and I'll tell you too, guys. Um, I asked him because he did an amazing thing actually for our one year anniversary. He came into my show, Lucidius did, and he just out of the blue said give me your paypal information and he sent me 24 dollars and he said pick two people in the room to win a bottle of juice happy anniversary you know happy birthday higgy six and i'm like wow he just paid for two people to get juice and i thought that was an amazing thing i did i almost cried and it was an amazing thing i, I was it I, it just blew me away and uh and so i'm like dude i want to send you some juice i mean like this is so awesome of you and and I said, what flavors do you like? And he said, surprise me. <laughs> I just sent him what I like, you know, the best of the best. And the, the one, you know, my favorite, David's favorite. Well, that's one of the things I, I like to do. Like when, I mean, you know, when, uh, when I'm trying something, I don't want to necessarily try what I want. I want to try what somebody else thinks is their best juice. Because it tells me a lot about a juice maker. It tells me a lot about their juice. Um... You know, and and that's just kind of the way I I like to do it, and it, it's very very good. And as far as uh, you know, what I did for you on that day, you know what? Like I said, it was uh, I know what an accomplishment that is. Uh, you know, for you, that's a huge accomplishment and uh, beyond cool. So thank you. It was beyond cool of you to do that. I mean, really, I I, I was blown away, and and I know the winners were happy that they got some juice because I'd already given away my DIY stuff, and it was it was wonderful. Like I. I really, I'm so touched. Like, I, I called David up immediately. I'm like, you're not going to believe! <laughs> um. Okay, well, it looks like we've got 77 people in the room wow. out of the 143 that were here that said they wanted Higgy. So I'm going to assume that the ones that didn't is because they may have already won Higgy or whatever. Um, but we have 77 people who are very interested in this. 78. Oh, 78. 78. <laughs> and, and one of the things, people, I want you to know about, too is uh you know part of what i'm doing here again is promoting uh show hosts and promoting what they do and in the cases that they have businesses also talking about that of course but jen has her show over on uh our gang it's from friday again from 11 a.m till 2 p.m and it's awesome because she goes through and she she does a lot of diy with the show she brings you through how to make juice and, and pretty much i think every show that she does uh, she makes a juice and then gives away uh, to I think it's three people uh, of whatever juice they decided to make that day and it, it's just a it's a fun show to watch it's a it's a nice participation show so if you're available if you have time uh, you know during the day uh, on Friday it's a great show to catch over on our gang uh, we even have a juice named after our gracious host Oh, that's right. Yeah, we had uh, uh, co Coco. No, what was it? Co Coco Rage. Coco Cot. Coco Cot Rage. Coco Cot Rage. Yes. Coconut and apricot and pineapple, and then of course Rage. For yep. you. Um So yes, Coco Cot Rage is a is a it's a nice blend of. There's not too much coconut in it, and I'm not a coconut fan. So uh, the pineapple and the apricot really and the coconut kind of smooths it out. It's uh, pretty good. Pretty good too. Very cool. Um, okay, so we have 79 people in the room. We'll draw one winner, and that's going to be for a sample pack, right? 
a sampler pack. Yes. I what 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 will happen is uh um, when we pick the winner and um, I'll ask you to go over to higgystigs.com and create an account and then come back here. I am me your real name and I will go in and I will put store credit on your account, which I will put enough to cover the sampler pack. But if you want to get something else or you want you know and please do. Credit. And, and please do, um, you know, the great thing, the best thing about when you win something is that it's the shipping's paid for. It's a perfect opportunity, uh, you know, to buy some more juice. And I can tell you that Higgy Six Juice is good. So if you see something that, 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 you know, that's there that you think you might want to try that sounds like it's good, please, uh, you know, buy an extra 30 mil or, you know, buy something that, you know, something else that, that sounds good. That's what helps keep keep us giving uh things to the audience it you know it's it's not inexpensive this isn't uh this isn't stuff that um you know it, it's not cheap for us to do this to give away these products so please help uh us out by helping the sponsors out in this case a temporary sponsor in higgy six but definitely uh worth the purchase so if you win uh you don't you're not required to but you know if you're smart uh and you want some great juice I would definitely, I would personally recommend uh, buying uh, buying some extra juice from them. Um, All right, so let's hit stop. Uh, hold on a second. Guessing is showing. Oh, okay. Um, Unleashed vapors. I'll, I'll get to you in a second. Um, okay, so we're gonna go ahead and draw the one winner. I'm gonna carefully click one time. <laughs> And then we're going to draw the winner, who is Seahawk. Congratulations, Seahawk. What? <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Oh, I have to check on Oh, yeah. Check and see if... Oh. Not eligible? Friday. Oh, you just won Friday. Oh, well, that's okay. <clears throat> this actually gives us an, uh, the ability to show what we do. So, uh, since Seahawk is actually not eligible for this, because with Higgy Sigs, uh, she requires you wait at least 30 days. So with Seahawk, we'll go ahead and move her back to the viewer. I'm sorry, we'll remove her from the rest of this drawing because this is going to be specifically for uh, uh, Higgy Six. So we're going to remove Seahawk from the rest of this drawing. And, and we're going to draw. And we're going <laughs> to we're going to draw a new winner. Uh, so that new winner is Bethy. Bethy, oh, and here's another cool feature. Bethy, you have 30 seconds to oh. respond. Oh, there's a timer built in, Here's your timer. Yeah. Whoa! <laughs> I was like, what's the timer? <laughs> yep, that, that's what it's there for. There you go. Uh, Bethy, congratulations. If you've not won Higgy Sigs in the last 30 days, you have just he, won yourself. He does qualify. It's been Perfect. more than 30 days. Well then, uh, Bethy, if you would like this prize, which I'm going to assume you did because you put in Higgy in the chat, uh, you've won yourself a sample pack. Uh, you want to describe that, uh, Jen? Yes. Uh, I'm going to put the uh, instructions, but I can just say it. Um, yes, uh, I'm going. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put. Uh, actually, if you, I know you already have an account because I know you've, uh, you've won before. Um, go ahead and IM me, and this is me. This is me. Um, I am me, your real name, um, so I can go to your account and I will put $18 of store credit on your account. Now that will cover a sampler pack in plus the shipping, um, but it's store credit, so you can use it any way you want. Um, oh, I think I that, I? Yeah, link would be good. <laughs> Let's show everybody else how to get there. And, uh, and yes, uh, can you make it recognize a response? What does that mean? Like Can I make it time? recognize a response? What do you What do you mean, Demillon? Like a emoticon? Um, it oh, you mean someone, oh. someone responding in chat saying, I'm here. Uh, oh. I, I, I can, and I've actually thought about doing that. Um, there's, yeah. It, it's, it, we could do it very similarly. similarly boy, I can't even say that word. To the way that I... That's a tough word to say. Similarly. Um, similar... No, that's not right. Anyway. Uh, to the way that I do the prize pool. So it is possible. Thank you, Bethy. I got your I am. And if you're to wait a moment. <laughs> Alexa. Dragon Class, it's not... He hasn't released it yet, but he will 
soon. Yes, uh, I'm hoping to have it done within about a week, and uh, I will definitely reach out to all the hosts on all the networks, and uh, you know, let everybody know. Um, the only thing, like I said, that I'm going to require of the hosts that use it, and it will be a requirement, and that's that the ads uh, that this area is, you know, is displayed. I don't want any hosts covering that up because, um, you know, that's the the space that I'm going to be using, uh, you know, to to make the tool uh, for you guys. So, but that'll be easy. Uh, and then one of the thing, the cool things is that uh, you know any network that wants to use it, as long as they you know oblige by that, they're more than welcome to use it. And uh, it, it, when you go to start the tool, it gives you a drop down of who the authorized networks are, and you just check or you just select the network uh, that it's going to be applicable to. So, well, and it, I even I even got a domain for it. How cool is this? Ready Random. That's what I decided to call it. The, I saw that. I wasn't sure if that was just a filler, uh, a filler or not. But yeah, that was pretty cool. Well, I'm I'm known for my Ready X Wick and my what's going to be Ready C Wick and Ready H Wick. I've sort of I've, I'm building this Ready brand. Uh, so I thought, well, perfect. Ready Ready Random. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's love it. So. It's not. It's not quite finished yet. Uh, ecstasy. Uh, he's, he's, he's almost done. Yeah. It's ready soon. It's 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 ready. It's soon. ready soon. <laughs> um, and what I've what I've done with the tool, as you can see, you know, we've uh, I've got this sort of square area on all of the tabs uh, that I've left blank for the very reason of you know displaying your pictures as hosts, or if you want to put you know if you don't want to put your picture up and you want to put a product picture up or a product link or you know whatever uh, as host this sort of uh, blue blue rectangle area up here in the top right. Uh, no matter what tab you go on, uh, is clear in the exact same spots. So you can set your cameras up, your angles up, in the same position. And no matter what tab you go to, it's it's you know you don't have to readjust for each type of random. They want to know what the ready C and the ready H and the ready. Uh, ready C uh, is for condensation. No, I I, I love your condensation, but I'm not going to sell you. <laughs> I, I might go to jail for selling you. Um, uh, ready C wick is going to be a cotton-based wick. It's uh, Pima cotton uh, that we're going to be processing here. And Ready H wick is something we are considering. Uh, I'm not sure that I'm going to do it. Uh, if we do, it'll be Ready H wick, which will be hemp. So. I wanted to ask a Metroid fan seventy. So can we substitute flavors in these shop sample packs? Um, like substitute how were you referring to like? Um, I mean, I, I have it limited to the hickey, what we call it's just like hickey signatures for the C. <laughs> hickey signature flavors. I do have that because they're kind of small bottles, and the idea of mixing up a custom mix in that smaller bottle can get a little tedious. Um, because you're, you know, you'd be talking like, uh, you know, drops at that point uh, of flavoring. Um, but so there's over 40 different flavors, I believe, that you can choose for the sampler pack. Um, I would hope that, that was, you know, is a good enough selection. Um, but maybe it was kind of what, instead of apple. Well, oh yeah, there's 40 different flavors you can choose in the sampler pack. Um, um, the sampler pack has all the hippie signatures. Uh, uh, listed. So, um, yeah, you can just pick any of those. Because I already have those concentrates mixed up and ready. You know, I just throw the amount of flavor in the bottle. It's not easy. So, yeah, I, we don't actually have straight flavors set up for the single pack. We just have the Hickey signature set up. It's, oh, that one! That actually, I didn't realize that was live. Um, that was... <laughs> David put that up. I didn't realize he made it live. Um, he put that up as sort of kind of a shop sample pack. Um, I have to go look at that. I don't even know what that one what that said. He told me he did it, but I didn't know he made it live. <laughs> I have seen that one. That was that was just be sort of like a retail sample pack. Um, for basically like a first shop to try out. Uh, or you know, or, yeah. So. Yeah, he doesn't even have flavor. Oh, so yeah, that's, that is, that's, yeah, that's not the same sample pack I was referring to. I'm sorry about that. That was a little confusing. Um, 
sample pack that we were referring, or that I'm referring to, is this one. Let me put the ones in the room. That one here. This is a three flavor sample pack. Um, it's three 13 mil bottles. There was 39 mils total. Uh, and you can choose from, like I said, over 40 different flavors. Uh, I believe there's four, over 40. I'd have to talk up the make sure, but um, yeah, there's a bunch of flavors in there. And these are all, all of these are recipes that we've created. They're not straight flavors. They're not, it's not like it's, you know, somebody's Boston cream that, you know, we got as a Boston cream. We actually created the Boston cream out of several different flavors. We created those recipes ourselves. So, um, yeah, the shop sampler pack, that's, that is really an idea of, like, that's what we would send to a retail store to say, hey, these are, like, seven of our current best flavors and, you know, try them out kind of thing. So yeah, that one isn't really customizable. That's more of a hey, here's our best stuff. This is the that, time. Did I answer your question? <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Looks like you did. You did. This okay. is the time of night, and we're not, we don't need to end the show now, but I do need to uh, excuse my wife. My, my wife is a surgical tech, know. so she wakes up at like dark o'clock 30. <laughs> oh I wake up God. in like an hour. Yeah. Oh my gosh. No. <laughs> no. Feel <laughs> like she wakes up. She wakes up around four thirty. So she, midnight's usually pretty pretty late for her. But uh, ten honey, o'clock is pretty late for me. Well, that's true. Yes. <laughs> but uh, crafty, thank you for joining us, sweetheart. Uh, I appreciate you hanging out with us. It was fun. Thank you. It was you nice too. to meet you, Jen. It was absolutely nice to meet you. And I, you do look very familiar. I'm almost positive I saw you were talking to you at time. Probably. <laughs> I, I never left the booth, though. Like, literally. Ever. Yeah, we were pretty much stuck there. I was stuck there. Yeah, I couldn't, yep. I couldn't leave. It was sad. Yep. That's the other thing, too, that I thought. I was like, you know, if we had a booth here, like, we couldn't walk around. And oh, no. No, you, no. Get, you get stuck 100% of the time. I mean, literally, we had a, a, a great friend brought lunch over to us. Because he knows how it goes at these types of things, and and we didn't ask him to. He just it was so awesome of him. He, and I, I keep talking about it because it was like the best thing ever uh, yeah. that that somebody's done for me. He just they, he just brought over a couple of to go containers of nacho uh, like nachos and and roast beef. It was awesome. It took us about three and a half hours to get through just one of them because it just you take a bite or a chip and then you talk for you know. 25 minutes to somebody. Yeah. Oh, it was yeah. just it, like shoving like food in my face. I'm like, I'll be right with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can, and I can so see that. I mean, I, shoot, I wasn't even a vendor there, but I mean, I got, you know, ended up casting for like three hours. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. yeah. I mean, I could, I, yes, I could see that. Well, Crafty, so, I think they, uh, I think they love yeah. you uh, joining us. So thank you again for another show tonight, honey. I appreciate you hanging out late with us. Yep. We need to do the show earlier. Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Love you, hon. Okay. I'm going to take you off Thank screen you. now. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Bye, John. Bye. Uh, let's see here. Oh, she took herself off screen. That works even better. <laughs> um, anyway. What bird butt tastes like? That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> how does one know this? <laughs> yeah, how, how, how does one know? <laughs> Um, tell us a little bit, uh, you know, I, our show normally runs at midnight, but, uh, I know that we can run, uh, you know, a little bit over. Um, so tell us a little bit about Jen while we have a few minutes, uh, about the show on, on Friday or anything else that you'd like people to know. Oh gosh. Well, um, well, I can tell you too about kind of how we got, uh, Iggy Six started. People oh. have asked us before. I meant to ask this question and just make sure you include this in your answer because I, I was okay. very curious about it, and that is how you came up with the name Higgy Six. So make sure you include that in the how it got started because I, I wanted to ask that question. That's that's a kind of funny story too. Um, it was um, we, when I was talking before about being pigeonholed, pigeonholed into what flavors you can you know get, and pigeonholed into what Nick levels, PGBG levels. Um, we created our business model so that, uh, you know, the one drawback to what we do is that there is no steeping time involved. Um, um, I do not pre-make bottles and have them sitting on a shelf and then pull them out of inventory when you order them. Um, 
the reason why you go to our website and you find that we offer every single NIC level from 0 to 24 and every single PGVG level between Max PG and Max VG is because the bottles are made to order. Okay, I make them when you order them. And we do that because, and, and, and I've never been more convinced than I am now that it was the right move to create a business model like this because everybody gets something different, you know? Everybody gets something different. And, I mean, I, I had, it, it kind of Alexa, blew me away the other day, turn but the party out. I actually... Uh, okay. Damn it. <laughs> what? Condensation put you up to that, didn't he? <laughs> Son of a bitch. I have, I don't mean to interrupt your story, uh, Jen. Sorry. The, the audience is going crazy about this thing called Alexa. I, I have, I have the Amazon Echo and it's attached to all these wireless devices in my house. So for example, if I wanted to, if I wanted to turn the lights off in my office, I would say, Alexa, turn the office off. Hey, give me a kiss. Come here. Good night. Oh, is that what they kept saying earlier? They kept saying, say, Alexa, party's on, or say, yeah. Alexa. Okay, yeah. I got it. Alexa, got it. turn the office off. Okay. <laughs> I don't know why it didn't work, actually. It should have worked. Alexa, turn the party off. Because she wants to party. Okay. Alexa, turn the office off. Okay. So that's basically what she does is she uh, gives you control over everything through your voice. Alexa, turn the office on. <laughs> so that yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry about that. Uh, sorry about that interruption. I'm sure the audience was uh, was thrilled to uh, see my wife torture me. They, oh, that's awesome. uh, the problem here's what happens, Jen, is that normally like I'll come and join three dog on a show or whatever. And I usually leave my speakers open so Alexa can end up hearing. Shh, Alexa, shut up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so that thing <laughs> ends up hearing them over the speakers. So three dog and condensation, they'll screw with me, and they'll like if they're if they're live on a show or something, they'll say a command, nice. and I'll be sitting here, and they'll turn my lights off, or they'll turn the party on, or they're you know. Nice. Whatever. Nice. Okay, nice. so Higgy Six, how how you how you came about it, and you you were saying, and, and do me a favor well, and start over because I think people were were distracted, <laughs> and I know well, I was. That, uh, we had you know that I've never been more convinced than I am now that that creating a business model where we make the juice to order, you know that it's it's not pre made and sitting on a shelf, and I'm just pulling out inventory when you order it. I, right. I'm making it when you order it because everybody gets something different. I mean, really, and, and, and that's what it boils down to. Like, we, we're not selling the juice that we think we should sell. We're selling the juice that you want, okay? And that means whatever PGVG level, whatever nicotine level, whatever flavor level, um, we offer three different flavor levels, you know, either like, like normal or with a flavor shot or even with a double flavor shot. Mm -hmm. um, you know, every PGVG level between Max PG or Max PG, that Max VG. Um, I actually did have a customer the other day who ordered 100% PG. It's 34 loop. Um, but it was very clearly marked. And, wow, and the way that's that, going to be a throw the, hit. <laughs> the way the drop down menus are, I mean, I, sometimes when people order it, they, they transpose the numbers, and I and I try to catch that. You know, if it's really low nick and they order like you know, 70, 30, I'm like, eh, and they're like, oh, no, I didn't. Sorry. Um, you know, I, I try to catch it, but I don't always. But this one, I mean, 100% PG is very clearly marked. You know, it's not like a ratio. And so I was like, okay, hey, that's what you wanted. So that's what I sent them. But, um, you know, everybody gets something different. I mean, it, it's never the same thing twice. And, I, you know, so I've just never been more convinced than ever that, that this was the way to go. So the only drawback to that is that there is no steeping time involved with our juice. You know, when you get it, it's fresh. It was made just a couple of days ago. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and, and that was really, that was how we decided to start this. It was like, you know, it, you just can't, you can't, you can't predict what people are going to want. You know, right. I mean, I've had, I've had times where, um, you know, there's been a flavor that sat there for, you know, months on end, never touched, nobody wanted it. And then all of a sudden out of the blue, I got like six orders in a row of people who wanted butterscotch. 
Right. You know, and I had to like, you know, and I ran out, you know, because I didn't have enough of it in stock because it wasn't that popular flavor. And all of a sudden now I'm, you know, getting big bottles of butterscotch because people want butterscotch. Because <laughs> 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 you, you cannot predict it. I mean, it's the weirdest trends happen at the weirdest times. Um, and so that's why we decided to make Hizzy Sticks be it like you customize the juice that you want for you. Okay, it's not for us, it's not for somebody else, it's your juice. It's the way you want it to be. Um, and, and, and it's working. It's, it's our niche, you know, that you can actually, you can even make your own recipes on our site. We have a customizer that allows you to make, you can design your own recipe and I will make it for you. It's like all the DIY without all the crap. <laughs> 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 yeah. Without having to keep the syringes and the flavors and the bottles and the gloves and, you know, we don't have to keep all that crap around. You know, I'll just make it for you. So. Well, and I'll tell you what I like about you is 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 just that your your openness and your your willingness to um, you know to take that time. I mean, you know, most of the people in the audience, of course, well, actually, pretty much nobody in the audience would know this, but um, you know, recently I decided I wanted to play around a bit with uh, DIY, and I I created this laundry list of flavorings, and I went to Jen and I said, "What do you think about these?" And honestly. You know, uh, I kind of expected to maybe hear back, oh, well, you know, this this one, two, and three I really like, this one, two, and three not so much. She went through every single one and, you know, gave me kind of, you know, detailed responses to each one and some of the ones she hadn't tried yet, some that she had. Um, but the time that she spent uh, for basically a stranger, because uh, one way or another I'm a stranger, um, uh, you know, it, it, it impressed me. And, and that kind of dedication or that kind of generosity carries over into the way that you operate your business uh and there's just no way that it wouldn't you know you either have that kind of personality or you don't uh and that's one of the things i like about you jen is that you you really impressed me uh you know by by taking that time and, and spending the uh you know making the effort with that well, I mean, you know, there was that, I mean, and it, the fact that you had this laundry list of flavors that you wanted to get, it was like, you know, I, there's several of them on there that I, I have tried and, and they suck, you know, <laughs> I yeah. mean, uh, you know, I mean, I make no secret about that TFA is my go-to place. I, I like the way they, I like their prices. I like the way they handle the fact that, I mean, if you know where to look on their site, they practically give you the recipe of what is in every single flavor. They tell you exactly what's in every flavor and how much of it is in every flavor. Um, and, and I've talked to them extensively. You know, they are actually, you know, as far as the whole diacetyl care, um, they're insured, or they're, even their manufacturer is insured against using diacetyl. Um, it's, you know, so they're absolutely diacetyl free. And then the components, that are used in place of that, which, you know, still some people have a problem with, and we understand that is the acetone and the acetyl uh, propionol. Um, but they tell you, they tell you exactly how much of those two components are in every single flavor. Mm -hmm. So you, yes, it does show that I like TFA. <laughs> um, um, you know, and so we have a chart, which I haven't updated it in about a month or so, I'm probably just going to update, but we have a chart available on our website that says, hey, look, um, if you want to stay away from these fla these components, that's cool. Here are the flavors that we carry that have those components in it, and how much is in there. Uh, you know, so you can see that if you know if you're not worried about it or being less than half a percent. Iceberg okay. TFA is the stands for the Flavor Apprentice. Uh, it's also known as uh, the perfumes of the perf perfumes apprentice, perf perfumers apprentice. Perfumers apprentice. Mm -hmm. um, it's a it's a flavoring uh, company in in DIY or you know in in general in, in uh, e liquid making. Uh, there's about five, maybe six uh, major flavor producing companies. Yeah, would you agree with that, Jen? Because you've got you yeah. got TFA, you have Capella's, you have Loran's, right. right. um, you've got there's one-on-one uh, -on -one flavors. Right. Um, there's uh, Flavor, uh, West. Flavor Art, Flavor West. Flavor yeah. Art. So about, about and I carry some flavors. You know, I, I carry some of them from all of them. Right. Um, TFA is yes, the bulk of my flavors I will admit is from TFA, but. TFA doesn't always hit it out of the park every time. Okay, I've gotten to a place from TFA that just absolutely sucks. And so, you know, I went to other companies, you know, and, you know, Loran, uh, you know, 
their, in my opinion, their peach and their cranberry, uh, their eggnog is just out of this world. It's really good. Same thing with like yeah. Capella's custard. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Capella's yeah. A lot of the, a lot of the, a lot of the flavor, a lot of the companies. You know, they, like Jen is saying, some. You know, they do some flavors incredibly. They do other flavors not so great. But then another flavoring company does that other flavor incredibly. So most juice makers typically have. You know, they're they're not dedicated to any one company. Certainly, uh, they get they get flavorings from all different. Uh, you know, companies and, and typically blend them together. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah, it can I be it, it can be overwhelming for sure, so, and, and and expensive because, you know, you like like the list that I gave you from the ones that I was interested in at TFA. You know, Jen saved me a g- decent amount of money by things that she'd already tried and knew was kind of garbage, but to me that sounded good. Well, when you're reading a name, like when you're reading. I don't know because I won't don't want to say any flavors when you're when you're reading yellow well yellow pig doesn't sound very good when you're <laughs> when you're reading uh, pink strawberry you know that might sound appealing but it might taste like shit uh, so you kind of have to rely on people's experience of, that have tried that flavor and, and and know that it tastes like wax or that it tastes like soap or that it's just not you know met the custard so to speak yeah. And, uh, and yeah, and like I said, sometimes, occasionally, I mean, it does happen that, uh, you know, there's, uh, you know, I mean, I got way, I, and I blindly did it. It was a mistake. It was one of those learning curves, you know, thing where I was actually trying, I, I don't like going to Lorenz because I don't like when they put food coloring in their flavoring. Um, and it really bothers me uh, whenever, you know, so, uh, you know, so it's like I, I try other flavors than Lorenz, even if I like Lorenz, trying to see if I can replace it. Um, because of the food coloring, it, it really bothers me. So uh, I had gotten um, cranberry, and, and I don't, I'm not even sure why I got cranberry from TFA because I had the cranberry from Lorenz, and it's really, it's not colored. I mean, it's not red or anything, so it's, it's, it's not, they don't put a lot of food coloring in that one. But I got it from a TFA, I opened it up, and I, you know, I mean, I hate to like come right out and say it, but it was like, I opened it up, it smells like vinegar, it's terrible. And I'm like, I'm, I'm not gonna make juice with this, <laughs> I can't do it. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, you know, and, and like I said, they just, they don't always hit it out of the park every time. So, you know, and you have to try it. You can't, I mean, you can't be exclusive to one two vendor. You just can't. And, yeah. and we tried every single coffee there was out there uh, before we found one. Because coffee just tastes like moldy ass, if you ask me. I mean, <laughs> it's, just, it's just terrible. I mean, the coffee flavors out there are all hideous. And yeah, I, I, I and I, I don't know anything about it because I haven't tried it yet, but I hear coffee's a, a very difficult one to uh, get any that don't taste like ass. It's it's hard, and you know, and and, and you know, and, and and I will tell you, it's just uh, flavor art is the only one. Uh, you know, and it's not that easy to get because they're an Italian company, you know, and, and you have to go through vendors that that are distributors to them. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there's not that many of them here in the United States. There's only a couple. <laughs> right. So it's uh, yeah. Um, anyway. What do you think uh, about what do you think about uh, flavorings that are extracts, like true extracts, like coffee extracts? I know there's some people doing some extracts for that, or tobacco extracts. Uh, what do you do? You, do you have you used extract uh, extracted flavors at all, or you use primarily the uh, you know, the professional blend flavors from the major companies? I tried extract. I mean, the kind of extracts that you would, you know, buy in a store are not strong enough. Um, you have to use a lot of it. Um, regular flavor extracts are not, are not super strength flavors. Um, and they make that pretty clear usually even whenever you look, you know, when you start researching it, that, you know, there's a difference between extract and flavoring. You know, extracts used for cooking, and it's it's not strong enough. Right. Um, doing your if you're talking about doing your own extracts, um, I mean, I, I've seen people, I've heard people talk about it, I've seen people discuss it, kind of thing. I, I mean, I, I have to admire people who take the time to do it, but honestly, it's it's, it's very time consuming. <laughs> I mean, time consuming is is crazy time consuming. Like it it would not be worth it. it. There's no way we could make our own extracts and then and try to make you know, mass produced juice as well. Mm-hmm. It's a crazy, crazy amount of time. I right. mean, it can take months 
to get you know even just a, a you know a, a quart of extract of something, and, and and even at that, then you're opening yourself up to all kinds of laboratory testing and whatnot. I mean, leave that to the professionals, uh, really. So um, that's my opinion on extract. <laughs> <laughs> So Scuba reminds us that although the name is pretty obvious, why, uh, why, why, what was the story behind Higgy Six? Uh, yeah, we had, um, well, well, our last name is Higginbotham. Yep. Uh, uh, I have not had that name uh, my whole life. I, I've only had it for the last um, two years, well, year and a half, actually. David and I have only been married a year and a half. But he's had it, of course, his whole life, and he's, you know, it's a mouthful, Higginbotham. Uh, and uh, so people have called him Higgy his whole life. Mm -hmm. uh, and we were sitting there talking about it when we first decided, you know, hey, maybe we should start you know, some, the company. I was like, well, what would we call it? You know, Higgy and Botham e-cigarette. That's just a mouthful. I, mean, that, really, I was going to say, that, that's just as much of a mouthful, yeah. Yeah, Higgy and Botham e-cigarettes, really? You know, and then we're like, well, okay, what about Higgy and Botham e-cig? What about Higgy e-cig? Higgy e, -cig? Higgy e -cig? Higgy Sigs. Hey! Hey! <laughs> ding, 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 ding! <laughs> and it just, just started condensing it down. And, and it was, I, was, I was like, oh, what do you. And I even said it in the joke. I'm like, what do you want to call it? Higgy Sigs? And he was like, and then we both stopped and went, Higgy Sigs. And, <laughs> and then we could call it Higgy Juice. And he was like, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> and that's, that's how that happened. It was just. That's pretty awesome. And people awesome. even asked us, too, like, you know, why, you know, cause he, a lot of people want to move away from the e-cig stigma, you know, no cigarette stigma. And, and I get that, you know, it's very, very possible that we may end up changing our business name to be Higgy Juice instead of Higgy Sig. Right. Uh, but it, I don't know, I, I, I think Higgy Sig kind of has a better ring to it. But, you know, we started this back when e-cig was the industry term. And I mean, and it still is to a great extent, um, e-cig. Uh, so it's, um, you know, and I, I don't know if we'll ever be able to shake that term. It's, I mean, I hope we do, but, you know, it's, it's, an, it's a term that everybody knows, e -cig. So. Yeah, I, I, that's a tough one because you, let's say you change it to Higgy Juice, then two years from now you're going to have to change it again because people are associated, thinks it's too much associated with, you know, children's, you know, juice boxes or something. I mean, there, there's always there's always going to be I don't know it's 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 tough it's it's tough to make adjustments in a in an industry that's that's young which really e-cigarette industry is young even though it's been around you know right. ten plus years um, it, it's tough to it's tough to make those adjustments but um, another question I've got for you that I'm curious of and I know I'm, I know it's getting late I don't want to keep you too too late but I appreciate your time um, your show. Uh, like I said, it's over on our gang uh, from uh, 11 uh, a.m. until 2 p.m. on Fridays. Um, what are your what? What's your goal for your show? Like when you know some some hosts do a show for you know the uh, um, you know the popularity. Some do it to give back to the community. Some do it to spread the knowledge. What is your goal? for uh, your TGI Gen show on Friday. It's all Higgy Juice. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> to keep myself relevant and in people's face. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, but it, it, that's a truthful answer, really. I mean... It's not, but it is also a matter of, too, that, you know, I, I, I have been doing the DIY thing for, like, three years now, and, and you know, I've I've done the trial and error thing. I've made mistakes and I've I've you know screwed up and 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 I do want to make sure that people are being safe about you know if they're going to try to DIY. I mean, because a lot of people out there do try to do it. A lot of them you know do it and still buy juice, and some of them only do it, and some of them do it and find out they're terrible at it. You know, but it, it, the important thing is to make sure that you're going to be safe about it and and, and that you're going to be you know practical about it when you do it. Um, you know, it's not just a matter of just throwing a bunch of flavors into a bottle and vaping it. Um, you know, there's math involved and there's knowledge involved and there's skill involved. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I don't, you know, so I've had, I've had a, I've had other juice makers actually come to me and they're like, 
you show people how to do this? <laughs> like, like giving the secrets away and everything. And I'm like, well, you know, but I, I try to at least give people the idea that, you know, yes, you can do this at home, but that to really do this, you know, properly um, takes a lot of time and it does take a lot of investment and it does take, you know, some skill. And, you know, while I'm happy to show you how to do it, you know, that the fact of the matter is, is that unless you're willing to invest the time and the effort in doing it, you probably, you know, want to go ahead and keep buying your juice from the people who do it professionally all day, every day. Um, you know, unless you're just somebody who really wants to make their own juice, you know, I mean, there's, I, you know, plenty of people. I People come to my show, actually, uh, that I know are hardcore DIYers, wouldn't step foot in a vape shop if you paid them, and, you know, that's just the way they are, <laughs> you know, um, and, but they still like to come into my show, and, you know, and, and they give me juice ideas, and uh, one of my show, one of my juice flavors is called Blackberry, spelled B-E-A-R-Y, uh, Blackberry Dew, because um, Bear, um, he's, he's a hardcore DIYer, like I couldn't get him to buy his juice if I paid him to buy it. Um, he absolutely wants his own juice, but he gave me that recipe during one of my shows, and it's one of our best flavors, and it's awesome. So um, it's really cool, you know. It's, it's there's. I just want people to. I am giving back to the community. I'm giving it for knowledge, and I, you know, but uh, yeah, I'm still with juice. That's my primary. Function. I'm not going to deny it. Baby girl reminded you that she named it. <laughs> she did name it. Yes, yes she did. That was yeah. hers. Yes, Bear 65. Yes, that is who he was uh, in very generous mood that day. I mean, he's come in and give me ideas before, but that day he actually shared his recipe. And, uh, and uh, I didn't have all the ingredients that uh, he uses for his, but I, I improvised, and, uh, and it came out really awesome. It's one of my favorite flavors. Very cool. Well, unless um, you can think of uh, any any groundbreaking uh, things that we haven't covered, I think we've I think we've covered pretty a pretty good uh, yeah, realm of a pretty good. Uh, well, my brain is just shot. Holy cow! Oh, thank you, blowing vape. <laughs> what did you say? That's, I was reading blowing vape thing. I said thank you, thing is a great name, easily memorable. Immediately, I identified your brand. I have maybe 20 brands of flavors. Couldn't tell you who makes some of them because the labels are so colorful and art, so you can't even read them. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, thank you. Well, that comes with you being a graphics artist, and and uh, I may hit you up because I need to completely redesign RBA supplies because my my graphics are just a mess. Um, and it, it, it's been, you know, it's one of those things that you know, I, I fell into my company by accident, quite frankly. Um, you know, there was a problem. I had a solution, uh, and I I've grown a business from there. Um, but I've done it, you know, primarily all myself and and, and with my wife's help, uh, help, of course. But certain things have taken, uh, uh, you know, have not gotten the attention that they needed. And our graphics, uh, fonts, things like that, is definitely one of them. <laughs> it definitely needs a lot of help. So. Uh, I can appreciate I your background and your talent of uh, of being a graphics art uh, designer because that is definitely not me. <laughs> well, thank you very much. It's uh, like that. I, I never actually claimed to be a graphic designer. I, I'll be honest with you. When I was in college, I, I wasn't that good at the graphic design part, but I'm pretty good at the computer graphics part, like taking an idea and making it digital. Um, mm -hmm. You know. It was the graphic design part is you have to come up with the ideas, and I wasn't always that good at that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I was actually, I was, you know, I was like, I have like this creative, I would say I have a creative well, okay? And if you only pull off the well every once in a while, it, it stays pretty full. But if you start pulling off the well every day, it gets dried up really quick. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, but taking an idea that already exists, and then making it better or you know making it digital I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good at that um, uh, but the yeah coming up with the concepts on my own was, uh, was a bit of a struggle in college yeah yeah well you did a great job with the with the Higgy Six certainly with the label with the name with everything uh, like Thank somebody you. in the audience said the name stands out it's easy to read uh, it sticks out in your mind it's something that you don't forget uh, you know those are all great things so 
Um, and you're a great person. You know, I, I met you. Oh, I, you. I met you through watching you on your shows. Uh, I've never obviously met you in person. I could have if you would have, you know, walked your ass, you know, 30 feet down to my booth. But, <laughs> um, but, but, but you I, know. Like I said, I do have the, I did, I did notice. There you go. Except that. Yep. Um, Absolutely. But I, like I said, I've, I've kind of got to know you through watching your shows. And uh, I appreciate you as a person. I appreciate you as a, as a fellow business person in this industry. Thank you. And, and you're doing it right. So, uh, you know. I did add hair this. <laughs> <laughs> I had all this hair right here. Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. But I It'll am. What was that? Yeah, it will grow back. That's true. That's true. Uh, I do need to shut the show down here, though. We're about uh, about 45 minutes over. It's amazing how quickly the time goes when you're having a good time. Um, Thank you very much, everyone, guys. I mean, congratulations to uh, um, uh, Bessie uh, on the win. And I, I haven't even looked, but I've gotten little emails pop, pop up on my thing. Um, orders have come in throughout the whole show. You guys are awesome. I mean, really, I... I'm still to this day. I get humbled and 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 honored that uh, you guys like my juice and uh, you like me to make the juice for you, um, and that you're willing to give me money to do so. Like I'm I'm honored, really. Uh, it's it's humbling, and uh, we're really really appreciative of uh, all of it. Seriously. Well, and I certainly appreciate Jen you taking the time to come on uh, with us and and to spend some time with our viewers uh, because there's they're not our viewers they're viewers out there that uh, uh, that we all get to enjoy and uh, I know that a lot of them uh, you know may not have ever met you before and I hope now they've had an opportunity uh, to kind of get to know who you are and hopefully you'll see them around. Yes, so thank you. Oh, there's Jody. Hi, Jody. Hey, Jody. <laughs> <laughs> thank you all everyone thank you so uh, uh jen i'm gonna thank you very much for coming on i i appreciate it, it it's uh it, it, was, it was a me. it was a pleasure having you and and i'm i'm really enjoying this sort of series that i'm doing of, of get you know getting to know other hosts i i hope that it will be, be beneficial to everybody uh you know this is the second week that we've done this uh, i plan to keep it going and uh, you guys are all more than welcome to come back every Sunday night from 10 till whenever we get tired. <laughs> so, <laughs> which, of course, for me, that means, see, I'm not actually tired. What I'm going to do from here, Jen, is I'm going to, when, when we close the show down, I'm going to go back to work on this randomizer because now that I've shown it oh. and said that it's going to be free, I know my doors are going to start being uh, beat down. So uh, I've got <laughs> to get that done. But <laughs> Oh, and real um, quick, I just want to let everybody know that this coupon code down oh, here is yes. one five. Um, is good for like I think David set it up for a week. Perfect. So this, I mean, I'll, I'll awesome. verify that real quick just to make sure, but it should. Let's see. There it is. <laughs> yes, it expires on the 11th, or well, it'll expire at midnight on the 10th. Great. I appreciate you doing that code for the viewers. Uh, that's awesome. So again, that's the code is Rage15. That code's going to be good for one week from today. So. That's very generous of you guys. I appreciate that. Absolutely. Yep. And, and uh, so thank you all. And Hobbit, um, y you know, I, I know we had to shut you, you know, get you to shut up a few times. Uh, you, know, <laughs> you were just talking a little too much. We really need I to try. work on. We really need to work on you uh, being a little more patient and you know talking less because you're just <laughs> just out of control there, buddy. I'll work on it in my free time. <laughs> Uh, anyway, everybody out in the audience, thank you very much for hanging out with us, Jen. Thank you for joining us, Hobbit. Thanks for uh, thanks for sitting there and looking pretty. And to everybody, we will wish you a very good night. Take care. Good night, guys. Bye.